So I need a <laughs> clap. Okay, so that worked. So uh, first and foremost, I took my shoes off and then I realized maybe my feet smell a little bit, mm. but my feet are really sore and I want to take them off. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my shoes off. Okay. But if my feet smell, I would like the two of you to be honest with me and say, Chad, could you please put your shoes back on? Can we do that? You know I don't have a problem with being honest, so I'll tell you a fucking feet smell if they smell. I'll just do one foot for now because... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to stagger it. Yeah. Don't do it like that. Like Shoe if, and sock. If you're, you know, if they smell, let's, you know, feel it. Okay, all right. So all just right. go all the way and then... I probably I might not even smell it. It might just be Connor. He's, he's closer to you. I want to get comfortable. I want to make sure we're good. All right, so we've started, Connor. This is live. It's officially live. Yeah. So uh, for those people, and we didn't celebrate this on last episode, we did because it... Jason hadn't posted about it yet, mm. but Jason has a baby. He has a baby. So congratulations to Jason Moses so tall. Uh, he has brought life into this world. Um, so I, I guess that's a good thing. It's a great. I think Jason's going to be a fantastic dad. Yeah, you know, I can see that. If uh, if Hugo told me he was going to have a kid tomorrow, <laughs> I'd be a little more concerned. But yeah, but right Jason, enough. yeah, Jason's got his shit together. And yeah, and also I think most of us have met Jane. And it's just, it's just pretty. He just got the dog. He's got the house. He's got the. He he did it the right way. Yeah, it was step right by way. step, right? Actually, you know, Jane kind of got him to do it the right way. It was first <laughs> like let's have a dog, then a second dog, and now a kid doesn't seem so terrifying anymore, right? Like yep. you have to run around dogs the whole time. So I'm calling him. <laughs> yeah, he the props to Jason for staving off human extinction. Yeah. He's, he's, contributed. he's made Elon Musk happy, you know? Uh, that's what it's all about. Elon Musk thinks there's, there's not... A, we don't want to talk about Elon Musk. <laughs> we don't want to get on the rabbit hole. Let's see if he answers. I don't think he, he will. He might be busy changing diapers. Let's see. It's what? Six hours? Six hours he behind be, us? He should be away. 2 p.m. <laughs> he you better be. He's got well, a kid, man. I guess you don't have a sleep schedule when you, when you have a kid, but... All right. He might call us back throughout the episode, all right? Because so, we've got plenty of time. So... Look, another thing that I wanted to, and and uh, and Yank, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn you down just slightly, just slightly. Yeah, don't no don't don't change where your mic is. But so the other issue, and the reason that I'm having to turn Yanko down, is because I am the the camel. <laughs> I am the pack animal. <laughs> I I Cut. they load me up, and I traverse the perils of the desert, mm. loaded with gear. Okay, I now I get it. And one key component for my H6 mixer here is an audio splitter for a 3.5 mil jack. Look at that, technical terms. And then we would all have a headset on and then we would all know our levels. Right. But because I fucked up, now the people are going to complain about the audio, which they also did last week because machine's fucking headset. Was very quiet. It, it also, though, had an echo. And because his... his must have been leaking sound which was getting picked up by his mic so people could mm. hear me talking in alex's headset and that's also on us mainly me for not checking alex's audio before we started well i don't think that's fair chad um i think you know we me personally because jason has a child now we probably share some of that load you know we put too much weight on your shoulders or back if you're a camel yeah, i am the camel uh so and also but I mean, it's weird, right? Like you and me are here and we want to discuss some of the stuff about the podcast, right? For example, how to avoid you having to carry this shit all the time. Like what, what else can we do to, to help this thing out now that we're going to be together at some events and, and able to do more in-person shows. And I arrived, you arrived earlier than me yesterday. Yes. Right? But I arrived 30 minutes before midnight to the hotel. Just That's a bit late. In, took a shower, passed out. Then both you and me had media from 10 a.m., Right. As soon as we finished that, it was going go into rehearsals and then come back, wait for this room to be cleared out because they were still doing media with the teams who were who had the, the latest slot and then just come in here to do the podcast. So we didn't even have time yet to sit down and kind of shoot the shit and figure some of this stuff out. But we will in two weeks time. We will find. We'll be on top of it. We will. Be, we'll be on top. We'll have a plan moving forward by the end of this event. There's a media mark around the corner. I can go and get the the correct hardware so that we're good going forward. And also maybe people who look if the if the video works. If the video yeah. works. Because this may just be me talking about video and there's no video. But I have a webcam set up there and I have a GoPro set up there and surely one of the two elements should be working here. Both are recording. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to say ESO have given us this space to use. This isn't an ESL podcast. We've just okay. been given the space. And the branding is there, but it should Ignore say it. talking counter. Sure. And I've had some new graphics made up 
and we'll probably use one of those when we release the podcast today. Honestly, as a as a long time listener, first time contributor, oh, I do think it's okay. It's the first event of the year for you guys, so okay. you're being hard on yourself. <laughs> I thought he All was right? talking about the podcast in general, <laughs> like the review. I think okay. it's okay. I think it's it's an okay. okay. No, podcast. I mean at this moment with this setup, I would be excited for this one. Okay. You know, regardless. So again, assuming audio levels, because that's the one. But yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, yeah you know, right. it's the start of the year. I think people are just gonna be excited to have you guys back, man. I think it's also great to do in person ones are always better because you know, online it's always you're not sure who's the next person who's gonna talk. Yeah, dude. Right? So you just, you're someone's always cutting someone out. Me usually cutting anyone out because <laughs> I talk too much. But I think um, you always learn something new, right? When you do in person ones as well. Sure. Like Maui, he got the spiel about Slava, right? Like the Serbian like custom. Oh or whatever. yeah, yeah. Now yeah. I learned about the half life of coffee is not two hours. It's six. Because I just had yep. a coffee right before this because I'm gonna be tired. Now maybe I won't be able to fall asleep, but I feel like I'm so tired. That won't be a problem. Yeah. Actually, regardless. So yeah. Today was a good day. Experience. Today. Today was like. I, so I don't know what your experience was like. Mm. Connor. What What did your media day entail? Yeah. So I mean, I'm coming off a of blast, right? Yeah. It's like 12 days of broadcast in a row, no breaks, but only half day schedules. Can't complain. Caster, the caster. The life. caster life. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, Yanka. So honestly, bless ESL. I had nothing to do today. My only responsibilities really? were wake up, fix my headset for the PC in our room because I tried playing Counter Strike yesterday and I was having I was having problems. So so yeah, I had no responsibilities today other than make rehearsal at 5 p.m. Which you which you were there. Yeah, and I, I thought I was gonna have to get a headset cable, but I ended up just fixing the problem. So okay, it entailed getting up at a bed at one. Okay. Ordering food to the hotel, catching rehearsal at 5 p.m. and now I'm here. All right. So if you guys need some energy, man, I'm ready to carry. No, well, look, so this is the thing. The day for you started it, you were here just after me for makeup. Yes. My call time was 10. And mine was 10 past 10. And we're in the hotel. So you can't fuck that up. Right? Yeah. So yeah. you come down, you get makeup. And then what I was doing today was the lobby that uh, Mohan and myself did in Rio. And they're, they're redoing that, right? So for me, it was just catching players and people when they least expected it mm. and just throwing a microphone in front of their mouth and seeing what would happen. So that's fun. Yeah. And it, it was, it was it, but the thing was everything becomes a little bit unpredictable because we've got everything going on in the hotel, right? There's all these different rooms. One of them we're using, but there's like an in-game set. There's like two single interview sets, one for social media, one for just general interviews. There's makeup out there down the hall is the player lounge, which is separated into three separate rooms. There's a barber, it, it, it's it's going off right and uh well oh, i didn't even mention that then you have spodek where the hero shots were going down and then the mck which is where we went for rehearsal uh where the players are going to go set up for their ssds and everything so you know tracking where the players were going and everything like that 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 got a got a bit out from me but uh, other than that i think it was it was a pretty good day and rehearsal was done relatively quickly yanko which i know is normally a point of contention yeah i mean you know we've done you do so many events especially you know with the TOs don't change their run of show too much. I mean, you, also for you, Scrawny at Blast, I figure, you know, it's like there's small changes here and there, but it's more or less the same structure of the show. So sometimes you feel like, why am I here to say, oh, this headset is working? Okay, you didn't need me to come <laughs> yeah. in and do that. Sometimes we had days before, you know, in the early days, there were no, I mean, early days, that, that's not early days. <laughs> if, if someone like Richard is listening to this <laughs> and Duncan, they'll be like, well, early days were in 2004. <laughs> You know, but <laughs> you had microphones. <laughs> yeah. So like 2016, right? There was no media days. They were just our day for rehearsal to test that everything's working. So and people pay you for that. They pay you pay you get half a rate for for rehearsals. So if you would come in and literally just is this my con? Yes, no, like and, and spend 30 minutes there and that's it. Like you, why are you wasting money? I mean, I I, I welcome. Hey, it. we like the money. But yeah, but for this money one, fans. I'll take it. It's not a it's not a secret anymore. Karma Karma posted earlier today. This the setup, yeah. like it's pretty cool. The hall of uh, hall hall of of heroes. heroes, man. Yeah. Hall of heroes, yeah. very thematic. That's that's the theme <laughs> for this one. And you know, I love the fact that it looks cool. Like we were there for rehearsal. It, it looks cool. The whole area. I like the banners on the side, right, with the past winners and whatnot. But um, the face to face. That's the that's the cool one, right? Yep. Like as as much as uh, as often as you can have that. It people you cannot. It does bring an extra element 100%. to the game and to the matchup. It's you know like mental warfare as well. I remember when I was coaching Phase at that blast in uh, in London, London when, when yep. they had it there, right? It, yep. it was a bit further away in that studio, 
But you know, you, you, I think people still remember that Cold Zero clutch against Liquid, and he, he stands up and like points to them. You know, that's sort of like if if you're on the other side and you're seeing that, you're like, this guy, just, this guy just like fucking took a dump on us, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, and you're just yeah. sitting there, and you know, you kind of you know you know that feeling, Chad. I'm sure, right? When you're playing and something horrible, and, and you just and just start sinking in, right? Like that's the worst feeling after a, a moment like that. So I think there's some really cool elements that are gonna be there. It's you know. First couple of days, probably figuring everything out, like what's the best way to sort all of that dynamic out. But yeah, I'm excited. I mean, for me, the last work I did out, except major, for this podcast, right? was the major. Yeah. So it's, I, I was b- getting bored at home. Yeah, kind of same for me. But there was a lot of the elements that you just discussed that you guys have had, had in the last few like blast seasons, right? Like especially, I don't know if it's always that they can see across at each other, but they're all. It was an octagon last time, right? But there was four, but it was yeah. kind of led it like so an it's, octagon. It's kind of like a diamond. Uh, okay. It's kind of like a diamond, but they don't. I, I don't think they do the set, and I don't step into the studio too often because it's That's on like right. the far side, and then there's like a big wall, and then there's the production tents. Um, okay. So we are kind of separated, but it I believe it's like a diamond and they play kind of side to side, you know, so they're, okay. they're, they're diagonally, you can see them in your peripheral for sure. And if you stand up, you can definitely get that. I know Apex was like chirping at Blame F. There was the Hex there was and I, 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 yeah. stuff. There was, I thought the funniest one, and then it kind of went underrated because it was like before the cast, it was just at one point complexity. While it was the complexity evil genius like North American cannibal game, okay. where only one could keep going. Okay. And while EG were getting ready, doing their huddle, all of complexity were just stood up straight staring at them. <laughs> okay, yeah, just like making that. no Someone sound, the man. Photo of this. Just staring at them. And I thought like that'd be a little intimidating. Yeah. Like if I came, you know, like we're talking about like this like tribalism and cold zero popping off and get up in your it, you know, it probably makes you feel small, but I don't know. If I saw a pack of people just stood in a line making there's an intruder. Or Someone's they're locking, locking us, us in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kinga, can, Kinga, Kinga is always there to save yeah. us from whatever. Shout out to, to Kinga, our talent manager. So even if someone always ready to in, save the day, she would come yeah. in with like a battering ram and open the door. Okay. So I'm well, not concerned. Let's quickly work as long this as out. we have the power. Well, we got the power, but if we have to sleep here, the couch is maybe big enough for the three of us. We've got multiple bottles of water. There's also half a pack of water over there. Okay, so we can survive. Uh, I just had dinner. So uh, where are we? T- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm hungry. We're I'm good. Sad. We're good. We're good overnight. Um, um, I'll say in terms of like things that got added that I've seen at Blast previously is obviously like, you know, Blast just got some credit for this cool like behind them and above camera angle. Hello. Are you filming? Yeah, it's all right. Come on in. What do, what do you need? Missing player. Badge. Ah, uh, see, this is the Better thing. than a missing player. So uh, people at home won't be able to hear the missing player badge comment. Let me see what I can find oh, over the couch here. Um, nothing here. Checking all cracks. Chad, always the good Samaritan. Nothing over there. Ready to contribute. Nothing between the couch cushions. Uh, Fuck. Good, well, good luck. Godspeed. We hope you find the badge. Good luck out there. All right, what were we talking about? We were talking about things that have been at Blast events. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this time, you know, this time they had the, uh, like, above-the-shoulder yes, camera yeah, angle, yeah. which was really cool uh you know it gives you that like kind of add an old land type vibe right exactly. like and and there was some really cool moments where i think they utilized that on broadcast like some good stuff they caught but today talking about the hall of hall of heroes yeah i noticed a camera and we can talk about this it's gonna be out, yeah. i think so like this will be out tonight i don't do you think yeah. we're i think uh, we can talk so. about I mean, it the games are gonna be live tomorrow yeah morning. exactly yeah. People will see it's it. not something yeah. they're not revealing i don't know what no they're not no. saving it so it's like then i then i will want to bring it up because i want people to notice sure. that there's going to be some sick camera angles there's a camera hanging from a from a line yeah, over cam. top so we've got a spider cam yeah. very very sports like and then also there's that that kind of walkway and this is where it'll be even better than the one at Blast because ESL here have a walkway behind the entire setup, yes. which I'm assuming will be manned by a free cam. Like, Apparently so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, the, yeah for so the stream. So Blast was static, set up, and chosen on one player ahead of time. Ah. So they placed the camera, but they didn't have it moving. If we've got a free cam behind player setups, that is... That is like what Blast did, but even better if we compare it to standing behind players. Sure. There's literally a guy doing that, giving you the vision. Yeah, that's the thing, right? That type of a shot. And, and this we've spoken about this so many times over the years. But, and I think Blast also tried something. Remember with that LA event that we did? Uh, that I played the few, final. That's I mean, right, I you were there. The I wasn't literally, there that time. Yeah. You weren't there that time? Launders cast with Hugo. Fuck. I got America I problems. Jordan was there. Uh, yeah. That's what yeah. Trace Tanasarantis did a 
excellent coin toss. Oh, but you hit his arm, you <laughs> motherfucker. You hit his arm. He still, he still remembers that. We were playing final against the Liquid. There was a coin toss for the veto or, or, or whatever. And Trace is like doing it. And I like hit his arm a little bit. And the <laughs> coin goes, the coin goes like, I don't know. Different to, to San Francisco, <laughs> yeah. right? So he's, he doesn't have a, another coin. So now I've actually screwed up like live. He's spending a minute trying to find <laughs> another coin. This is on camera. He's like sweating. Yeah. Oh, up. no. Yeah, it's, I'm, oh, I'm such no. a dick towards Trace, man. And I love him, but sorry, Trace. Again. But, but that event tried to be a bit more intimate. But the thing that it missed was exactly this because being able to see the stroke of the arm, right, with the game in shot, that's... <laughs> I know. Okay. Stroke of the arm All with right, the money man. shots. Yeah, Chad. That's... All right, man. <laughs> Fuck. You, but regardless, seeing that whole motion and the emotion and everything, like you could see some, like how intense Perfecto is in like a clutch situation, right? right? When he's gripping his mouse and everything, you can see him like almost gritting his teeth in a way. If we can illustrate more shots like that and have more, because we're starting to get more of it, more player comm stuff, more yep. hearing. All, so all of that stuff helps the normal fan I don't want to say normal fan because a normal fan knows Counter-Strike. But let's say people who maybe just are watching Counter-Strike as entertainment and don't know what it's like to play it. It helps those people uh, definitely understand a little bit more what goes into playing, right? Yeah, and and the, the, comms, the comms for me are huge. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, maybe we touched on this the last episode. Like, I don't think any one of us is under the illusion or delusion that the best and most viewed content is always going to be you know, whatever is related to the players, whatever gets you like closer to the players and hearing from them. And, you know, with I, I think I mentioned the simple setting up video yeah, that yeah. you did with him. It has over a million views on, on ESL's YouTube, right? And there's a lot of different content that we did over the, the years, you know, in-depth, funny skits. And, and I think they're all good, but not as popular as, as this one. Player comms are obviously, you know, a big one that uh, that that you can do so that's sort of what you're trying to do with this as well bring it closer from their pov how it looks like like how they're moving uh you know player cams were the first thing back in the day so it's, and and then it just evolved forehead there. cams for a while there thank god we're away from the forehead cams. <laughs> right oh, yeah like yeah. the side angle just that's even better as well so yeah, it's much better we've well, there's definitely been some improvements another one i guess for this event for eso is the fact that now they're not exclusive on twitch anymore which is a nice bonus okay cool right yeah because i think like the and the thing is i understand that the viewer only wants what's best for the viewer but like having an exclusive deal with Twitch, which is what everybody wanted. Because you remember when we were on YouTube and when we were on Facebook, everyone was like, fuck these platforms. Which, to be fair, they were both pretty dog. Facebook sucked. Well, Facebook, yeah. Facebook, YouTube's Facebook, improved. Facebook was yeah. dog, but I always liked YouTube for the simple reason that you could just go back. Like, you could just rewind, yeah. you know, whenever you wanted. And uh, I know that Twitch at that time, when, the first YouTube, when YouTube first started getting into it, Twitch still had issues with some locations due to routing or whatever, or depending on your provider. It would just, you know be kind of laggy right so um I, I think for me youtube i never understood why there was that was just like a tribal tribalism yeah, right? just, oh, we're used to it, twitch, no more twitch, twitch chat twitch is our twitch is our thing. Yeah. yeah it and, was it wasn't the that's culture. true i underestimate twitch chat like for a lot of people that's you know a, a part of the experience a part of the experience yeah. right so um but yeah I'm, i think now people it's getting more and more even when you have an event that does youtube as well yeah i yeah. like youtube youtube's good and it's easier for people to like chromecast shit and stuff as 100%. well in places yeah. or, that's the big one yeah. I, I think something that it goes a little bit not not underrated but it a lot of people wouldn't know because they're not from a region like me but sometimes i'd get bad routing to twitch you don't get you don't traditionally get bad routing to youtube but like depending on where you are it's fucking or, google they're everywhere right, right? <laughs> so, so like so, they're so here right now even even that even that just having better routing sometimes that makes a big difference in how you're able to watch these games that was one of the funnier things you know when people were talking about you know the vaccine and i don't want to get into that here we but, go you know, people we're gonna were, get a covid people, how long that's it no, 20, but people, 20 minutes, were, huh? people who were talking about oh they're just using this even even sarcastically right oh they're just putting some trackers in us oh yeah you know so they could Bill whatever yeah, i'm like yeah. dude you know your phone, <laughs> your smartphone yeah. is all they need to track you. Like yeah. you voluntarily give, you know, do, do you ever not allow anything, cookies included, yeah. right? Like you just do everything. You just go through that. That terms of service could have you no like selling off your firstborn to them. You know, you wouldn't even care, right? Like you, you wouldn't get to read it 
even so that's always fine like you know with all the permissions and everything that goes on it's like their error you know how does why how do you think google knows like when you look at the route to take but you know when you drive it's not that you know they it's just the locations of all the phones. phones if the phones are moving slow that means they're traffic if they're going at a normal speed then there's no traffic yeah well look we're we're now talking about gps tracking and you know right look there's a little bit of everything i want it we offer everything here you know but there is something that i wanted to i wanted to play a bit of a game a game about i'm done what did you wow it's not a fun game <laughs> it, it might be fun those, what those did, are my favorite types of games what did you forget because i forgot the fucking oh. splitter and i forgot something else but i'll go my my thing's pretty boring did anyone forget anything yeah tra- yeah yeah something big man i forgot uh i forgot my sandals like my hotel sandals, oh, you know, you've got okay. like that one pair of comfortable yeah, shoes yeah. to wear at the hotel. And uh, because I've had the long, same pair for the longest time. And then I recently got a pair of Crocs because I can wear those in the sauna okay. and I can wear them in the shower at the gym. Okay. So I had like made it, you know, there's a couple things between last season of CSGO and this season that I changed out. I got a new backpack and I got a new gym shoe, essentially. All right. A lifting shoe. No, no, as in like uh, replacing my sandals with Crocs. Oh, but then in okay. packing my bags, because it was a different item, I didn't think about it, and that's what I left behind. So like this, this hotel that ESL's got us in has a very nice sauna downstairs, yeah, and I'm you've been big on the sauna, it. man. Yeah, yeah, we've been here a day. I've already used it. So, okay. um, all right. So a couple of things. First of all, you need to ask for a raise. Because year to year, you deserve more things than, than a backpack, backpack <laughs> and a new pair of sandals. That's the first thing. Second thing, I did look in on the sauna when I was there earlier, but you have to like set it yourself first from the outside. Yeah. I've already set it to the ideal temperature. Oh. Now all you have to do is hit the bottom right button, which has a little fire on it, and that'll start the heat. The button above that to the left is the only light that functions, and right now it's at 100 <laughs> degrees Celsius. It takes about 15 minutes to warm up. All right. Shit. That's great. He Got does you. know his sauna stuff. Got you. Okay, so you forgot your sandals. Yeah. All right. All right. You, Chad? I for- uh, oh, yeah, you forgot the thing. But is that the only thing? No, I also forgot makeup wipes. But I can right. go get makeup wipes anywhere. But, like, it's just like, man, now I have to fucking go out in the cold mm. and get makeup wipes. If I just brought makeup wipes, which I have at home, then I wouldn't need to do this. Do you wear makeup every day on broadcast? So now, after media day, I'm only going to get powder. Okay, yeah. Right? So I was just say. for the shine. I've just stopped. But, yeah, right? Because we're on camera so short. And you have wonderful skin. Thank you. Yeah, wait till you get old like me. Um, It all starts to fall apart. (laughs) But yeah, but but it's just something small. But I use makeup wipes for more things. Like I'll use it, for example, if they give us like an IFB, I'm like, where the fuck has this been? Uh, Whose ear has this been? You know, I'll sanitize it. Or maybe, you know, you keep a a, a makeup wipe in your carry-on luggage, doubles as a wet wipe. Maybe you need to clean (laughs) your hands. So this is it. You know, it's more than just a makeup wipe to me. What about you, Yanko? You've got anything? Not really, but the reason for that is I can't like be arsed to. I brought two suitcases. Sorry, right? what? Two, two big, su- two big suitcases. Well, you were only here for two weeks. Yes, but here we go. You're, I'm on the desk, Chad, so I have to bring different suits, That's jackets, mm. shirts, all this kind of stuff, different combinations of things, shoes because it's a full, it's full body shot. That's right, fair, right fair. as well. So you need that sort of stuff to give, you know, the proper. The look. The look to you, the, to the broadcast. It's a I was going to say, well. change up on desk too, right? Like, are you stood next to Maniac on a given day or, or are you next Kassad. to Kassad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kassad. Kassad, He's pers- copping straight. Pers- yeah, he should, <laughs> right? So there's that. And also, here's the thing, right? I could have realistically packed in one suitcase and maybe a carry-on suitcase, right? Sure. But then, like, you have to cram everything in. And on the way back, I'm not going to, you know, pack everything nice and tidy. Sure. I'm just going to to shove shit into the suitcase right and also what if i see something nice that i want to buy or want to bring a present back for someone right this way i don't need to think at all i get the second suitcase for free with my status i don't have to pay for it Look at and also guy. the carry-on yeah. you have to carry it with you during the transfer right sure. from the plane to the bus to the then the, 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 this thing it just goes into the plane it arrives at your destination you put it in the van it's at the hotel the only problem I have here is the rooms are a little bit small that oh, shit, I that can't actually yeah. even properly fit the two suitcases. So I empty one out, put it in the closet, put everything in the second one. Okay. You know, there's ways around. So so 
that's kind of so you didn't forget anything because you have literally so everything because i brought like probably way too many things I brought, you put an effort to fill both suitcases yeah i, I <laughs> right. brought like yeah. swimming you shorts. have shit you're not gonna i brought touch. swimming shorts but i think it's minus one outside <laughs> yeah but i was i brought them in for the sauna okay i know you're supposed to be full naked in the sauna but well, like you don't have to have your dick i don't want to i don't want to intimidate people <laughs> you know with how hairy my ass is but um can't and, intimidate me bro yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like i don't know for the stuff for the gym you know i have like eight dumb t-shirts for the gym okay you know, or slash yeah. whatever but in reality a lot of it actually you know it's like six jackets nine shirts right yeah. like it, it would be too much for just one suit okay so Yanka forgot nothing connor forgot sandals and i forgot an audio splitter and fucking makeup wipes which is the most important thing to yeah me, but never mind but never mind but the, i'm watching the levels as we go and it seems it seems like it's going okay right i think i think people at home will be relatively happy with how it'll be better than the last episode <laughs> fucking hell like i tried to mate you should i'm an idiot right connor i'm technologically a newt like I'd, i i don't know what's going on i can build a computer if you put me in a room and gave me four days and you said good luck right i could probably pull it off with internet connection uh you'd be fine dude yeah like I, you think could YouTube YouTube it. I could <laughs> no i think i could do it i could put together lego someone says it was that easy um i couldn't do like the whole thermal paste nonsense and all that stuff but when it comes to um when it comes to wait, what was i even talking about? oh like doing the audio jason's been doing it for a while mm -hmm. and i just haven't been you looking at it the Chat, levels are good i have a question though yeah why isn't there a timer in the bottom right uh, I don't know. We're definitely recording. We are? Yeah. All right. There's a timer. 26 minutes, 53 <laughs> seconds. Don't <laughs> fucking freak me out, man. <laughs> I'm looking at my oh, PC. It's man. like here on the right. I'm like, fuck, oh, man. Oh, I, shit. yeah. Fuck. That would have. How long is it? 27 minutes. Now. All right. I think it's about time we talk about a little bit of Counter-Strike maybe. Well, we've been talking a around the counter-strike universe but you want to get into the specific well yeah you, you just a little bit and then right, we can right, go right. you know i'm, I'm sure along the we'll way get, we're yeah, going to we'll get around we'll derail we're going to get what do you want to start with well blast it, it just happened all right yeah, yeah. sure we right? look back so six teams were successful and six weren't yeah yeah so the thing is also and well, here we go well we're not gonna i'm not gonna throw you under the you know put you on the spot here connor or anything but over the course of our episodes you know whenever blast comes around mm -hmm. one of the topics that we talk about is also you know the format even last year yeah you know the fact that there's a lot of games at the beginning that are just for seeding and you know we you understand i understand that you have to fill out the days with content and all of that stuff is good but i mentioned this now because we saw today as well you know some a couple of the players kind of in, in some somewhere on twitter like reply to a thread and say yeah because there was the news that their viewership was down year to year yeah it was twists but it's you know and then twist was like yeah that's because you know games up until whatever date mm -hmm. don't really mean anything kind of because you're not out and they're just for seeding and stuff which i think is like it's not completely true it's not they don't mean anything like if you win some of the games you know if you lose all the games yeah you can still qualify but you need three best of threes in a row right and concealing the field of teams it's not really you know that that's going to be difficult for any team to run that to run that gauntlet yeah yep. and i hate the, but this is what i wanted to actually come in on right okay. like i still think they need to change the format but we talked about this and you know it, they can either make you possibly they are aware of it and they just not something that can be feasible this year maybe that's in the works who knows right it's still a good product fun to watch um but can you explain to me, either of you two, how Yakinder comes in, right, after they fucking bomb out and Here lose too low to big. I didn't think we right, And does that overtime thing, you know, the, the post day yeah, 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 thing yeah. and has a chat and he's like, well, you know, fucking Cheery. coy and whatever the word is, right? <laughs> and he's in there and he says two things. One of them being, well, we weren't really that prepared for this tournament. The first tournament of the season, mm -hmm. you weren't prepared. What were you doing? Are you the world's best? It wouldn't even matter if they were the number one team in the world by a large margin. It's like you obviously had things to work on. And listen, and, and any one of my players can say this. When I was a coach, I always wanted to give players as much time off as possible. Like when we, we would come back from a tournament, I would at least two days where we don't practice, you know, two, three days where they can just be with their families, you know, take their mind off of the game then online practice and then go into a boot camp for 
even three days is enough. I always felt that, you know, boot camp, you needed to really get into the zone before a tournament. So, of course, time off. NA players had to spend a lot of time away from home. Give them all the time off, right? But then, you know, at least like a 10-day boot camp before the tournament, before the start of the season. It's not just because of the tournament. The players are rusty individually, right? So it's like, how can you say you're, you're not that prepared? And then he says, we're treating this as a boot camp. It's like, how are you treating this as a boot camp? It's not really, it's like, yeah. You, you going through the showdown is not a given It's online thing, as well. Right? right? It's online. It's going to yeah. be a pain in the ass. I, I think it's like around the RMRs. Yes. Yeah, they're right on. They're stacked. So, so, so that's going to be, that's going to be, a, yeah. a, the timing of it. Is, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be something where you can really like allow yourself to be all in mm -hmm. potentially. And the finals are in, in the US, right? So obviously as Liqu Liquid as an org, yeah, for sure. Be and there. the players, yeah. they would want to, that's true. Be there. So I don't, th this baffles me. And this happens every now and then with teams, like sort of coming in after a break and saying we're not prepared. Like it's one thing to say we we did like a boot camp and practice. There's still things we need to work on, but we did a lot of good work, which sure. is what yeah. every team is supposed to do and say. Like, I just don't understand this. It, it, it's like, hmm. I think, okay, hmm. so fair, There's right? There's to unpack here. There, yeah, so so I'll, I'll try to take it back. I'll take it back to, first of all, the format, right? I think right there, yeah, it needed to change from last year, and they did slightly change it. it. Slightly, yeah. Uh, that slight change made at least topping your group that much more important, right? Did you just, you skip the gauntlet phase, you skip having to play one or two more best of threes. The problem in that sense is like, I still felt like they gave chances within changing that format, where sure. one team from the group gets to go through, but that team has to win their opening game and then beat the other team who won an opening game and then wait for the other three teams to battle it out to get to that last match which rematch, then it's maybe. like yeah. if if you beat the other team who opens with a win that could have gotten you straight into groups or like straight into spring finals and i, I know that's like it's very brief right it's a very small period of like because i do sympathize with blast in the sense that they just have so much less of the calendar so I do feel like they, as a product across the year, have to, they have to make more Counter-Strike. Like they, they just need, you know, they're, they're trying to get hours up. They're trying to get viewers. Um, so it does feel like because this is the longest event that Blast puts on throughout the year, mm. and it's still only 11 or 12 broadcast days, yep. that if you didn't have those extra games, this would be a seven to eight day event. And showdown would be seven to eight days. And fall finals and spring finals are also seven to eight days. So yeah. Blast is now at that point throughout their two seasons, 60 broadcast days. Yeah, but I think this is inherently a problem with them wanting to do so much partner stuff, right? And I understand sure. why, because they've partnered with these teams and everybody wants to make a bit of cheddar from it. But And it had to be that way when it was done yes. to secure some of these and good teams. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, no one's going to watch so, fucking, I don't know. Pain gaming play MIBR. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. But so that, that that's that's the that I think is why we still have some fluff in this format. That was a terrible example, by the way. Brazilians <laughs> are going to watch anything. So. Uh, going to watch IHC versus Greyhound. There we go. There we I go. think you Yanko just mentioned up something else as well though. Is that I, I would say and I would say anticipate changes for next year. I think they're a okay. year behind making significant changes to uh, the format and maybe the teams that are there. Well, here's another thing. You said 60 broadcast days or whatever. You said it's 12 days of broadcast here, two se two two seasons of 12. That's 24 days, yeah. right? Like IEMs that are not Cologne and Katowice, they're eight days long, basically from when the players arrive from when they leave. Yeah. yeah. It's so eight days. Six so days of play. if they trade off, if they just change their format into like more of a, what they were talking about, at least when I was before I went to coaching, like more of an F1 sort of a style and different stops and then have the world final, mm -hmm. So instead of those two group the stage seasons, phases, you phase. have three three tournaments you can yeah. hold, and the showdowns can be two more tournaments. So that's five stops plus two finals that they have plus the world finals. So if you would kind of do the circuit differently, if mm -hmm. just you know the, the the concept was different, that's a lot of days in there. Now, yes, if it's twelve days now, if you take eight, you know you would have to sort of work with ESL in a sense of if you're changing it. They would start, let's say Katowice would start seven days earlier, right? And that would leave the gap for Blast. To do something else. Either, you know, after Pro League to have time to do another one of these stops and so on. So I think 
in the calendar i think it could be managed in the calendar but, right it's but it's just it, more of a thing where it you could know. be but what even just this though right yep. so like i understand so let's just for a second remove the fact that this is a qualifier for the spring finals just for one yes. second right and let's just say that this event has a winner Mm -hmm. Let's just say that the groups are not called groups. It's just only the partner teams, which will, you know, I've asked this question on different podcasts I've done to viewers to comment and say, hey, what do you think? Like, are you okay with watching this? Some people are, some people aren't, some people are impartial. They're just whatever, right? And they don't really have an opinion. But there's definitely people who are happy just to watch the partner teams because most of their favorite teams and players are playing. So if you had a 12 team tournament, which is there's 12 partner teams, and you just had one winner, there's an excitement curve. We have a winner. Hooray. Then our next issue is how do we qualify the teams for the for the showdown uh, for the finals? But that is also where Blast could do things uh, in their own favor, right? Like they could go, I don't know, if you split the showdown up, right? So you've obviously got three teams from North America. Um, you're gonna have to throw some Brazilian representation in there. And then you've got everybody else in Europe, and you have whoever won the showdown and whoever won the world finals, they're automatically in the spring finals for example right yep. like and then you need to fill out six more slots so however you do that whatever and maybe it's online so it's not ideal but then you have two other tournaments where people qualify and then then you go to the spring final right but because i think the thing is the problem is now that people have started to to see it they understand that these groups are a qualifier for another event where all these teams get yet another shot to try and qualify again so they understand that the stakes are low but if you make it a standalone event where we all agree that the partner team, we will decide who is the best of the Blast partner teams. Because that's one of the things that upsets me too, is seeing a group stage MVP award, which is a sales obligation, I understand it, but it's a group stage MVP award for teams who didn't even all get to play against each other, right? right so, yeah, it makes you know, sense. it's a little bit skewed. And I think, like, I, I'm sure, and this is the thing, I think Blast, in terms of what they can do from day to day can pivot quickly, but what they can do on the broader scale, I think that they have a harder time throwing yes. their weight around. Whereas ESL can throw their weight around in that regard, but they have a harder time pivoting day to day because they're a much bigger company of the amount of people. So like, and this is the thing, everybody knows Blast has the best production. It's offering everything that the people at home want to see. You're getting the fun stuff, you're getting the interesting stuff, you're getting insights, you're getting the shoulder content, you're getting great commentators, you've got a good desk setup, right? So everything is good from Blast on that. It's just the format. Yeah. And, and and that's the thing, like they're experimenting with what they're doing. That's why I, last year I justified, I was like, yeah, I can see this. And this year I justified it again in my head. I'm not as hard on it. For me, I saw 12 teams play who I'm interested in and I get to see their rough form coming into this event. And that's about, that's about yeah. it. I think the timing of the events of groups is cool because there's, you know, if there's new roster changes and stuff within partner teams, yeah. we get to see them yeah. off of the break. So that's, I think, you know, the one angle of having those group stages right then and there. Um, I do also think, like, to bring it back to, like, what they could do in terms of, like, you know, making these standalone events in a traveling instance, I think we have to remember that Blast now, Groups is done in Copenhagen in a studio that they own, Showdown's done in Copenhagen production-wise yep. from a studio that they own, yeah. and so Blast actually only holds now two, LAN, three LAN events in the year, right? Like, it's, the, it's the finals. Yep. We lost one of Lisbon. them is also in Copenhagen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think the Royal <laughs> Arena is fucking sick. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing, yeah. though. And that'd be, for me, be it's great. on the level of Katowice. 100%. Yeah, it'd be great it. if it was its own thing because yeah. then if it was its own thing yeah it'd be exactly as Yanko said it'd be on the level of a Katowice and Cologne the only thing holding them back is the fact that it's so few teams yes that, 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 that's, that's a, that is a big one that's but it. I also think that the reason maybe format didn't change and schedule didn't change is because for sure whatever they had in place when they made these partner teams before we saw because I'm sure even blast from in t from the inside now now that it's existed for over a year right this this season this these two seasons of blast are going to be very comparable to 2022s in terms oh, yeah, we're yeah. coming out of the pandemic they put together this circuit this is what it was it was probably a multi-year deal to teams yeah and on top of that I think that with the major this year, people just don't really want to touch around what's going on with oh, Premier yeah. at Blast. And they've got Rainbow Six now as well. They've got right? Rainbow Six, they've got Fortnite, yeah. they've got CSGO obligations to Premier, and then they decided to take on a major, which is a something that, that I never saw coming until they, until they changed some higher-ups. Um, you know, and that was always like the public opinion it was like, why would Blast do a major? Yeah. Um, Blast were never going to do a major, but, you know, the Charlotte um, kind of came into blast and has looked at the major like oh that's that's the biggest deal in Let's csgo yeah. that's the best thing you can do well then yeah we're gonna do that yeah. you guys have all this success already you've got the pieces to kind of 
you know, and she, I think, injected that ambition into into Blast. So I think that's maybe why things didn't change. But they do need to change, man. I would say even as from casting it, like I, I'm, I'm not a sellout, bro. Like sometimes some of those days I'm like, okay, me, me and Launders cast the exact same match somewhere in the bottom, you know, somewhere in the four. I don't even remember the format for Christ's sake. It's been a week. <laughs> I don't remember at what point, but we were doing the same opening game as we did for that group. G2 Navi probably. Uh, they played well, not the opening. They played in the winners game. And G2 then they beat them, and then Navi came back, and back in the in the actual final for the first spot in G2. Beat Actually, them again. you know what? No, here's the best part. This is where I was about to get to. I was bitching about it to Maui Snake, and he said, "Yeah, bro, me too." And he did the G2 Navi game. Ah. So that same day, that day, we was a repeat schedule or repeat opening matches. Oh, it was heroic uh, there. EG. There it is. Again, yes, yeah. heroic right, EG yeah. again. Yeah. Okay. See that that type of stuff they could easily fix just by like rejigging the brackets between like yeah. so like everyone drops down yeah. one or yeah. something. And yeah. here's the thing: this has been throughout Simple. CS. Whenever people talk about formats <clears throat> and dislike the formats, it's usually people complain because they don't see their favorite team go through. Right? They get screwed. You know, a good team gets screwed, quote unquote, by the format. Right? But what I always like to say is, well, this form, the formats like this are usually even more unfair towards the underdog. Sure. Because look at a team like EG managed to take down times. fucking heroic, yeah. like the best, the number one ranked team in the world. And the reward for that is you have to play them again. Yep. Like sure, in a different format, they might have to do that regardless, right? But, you know, in, the, in, in some of these things, it's like, yeah, it, it's very difficult. You know, one time out of five, probably, if not more, is EG going to beat heroic. So that in, and the reward isn't really all that much because it was just that opening game, and, and unfortunately for them, so. I think you see it in the teams too, right? So to, to circle back to another point you made when you brought up the subject, I think that we look at Liquid, who said like, oh, we're kind of treating this as a boot camp. Oh, we're kind of yeah. open it up. You know, Simple said the same shit for Navi. Ah, this is you know, like the run up into Katowice. So I do think that the, the, the unfortunate trickle down effect of a format that is considered by the community and viewers as maybe not the most thrilling, but a good way to feel out new rosters or feel out who did come off boot camps, who did play well at these events. Mm. Vitality, I guarantee you they had some type of preparation coming in. Sure. They looked phenomenal. Yeah. And that's fucking awesome because now we're in Katowice and just like G2, right? We're all waiting. How, how are they going to perform after the Abu Dhabi situation? Like, you know, the Abu Dhabi win. I'm glad Blast exists so that now coming into Cato, we're already starting to change or like we're already starting to like set you know the narratives right the tone has been set by blast it's framing for the year yeah it's framing right? for the year and they do it after each player break they yeah. do it for spring and fall so and, and it's perfectly fine and, and pro league is an event like that pro league is an event where a lot of teams come in because of the volume of games the way it was before you get five best of threes lots of practice in your group right so yeah. that's the way and also when it is in the middle of the season sort kind of um you get to test a lot of things like you can swap roles within your team you can force yourself to play a bit more maps that's like phase did prior to cologne they played that rubet thing online and, yep. they, and they played a lot of overpass to sort of get like reps in um so and that's perfectly fine for teams to do that the only reason why it sucks for blast is because it is like a qualifier for the big event right sure. for the final so you wouldn't really want it to be like that for esl you know they don't really care probably Stand about that. Now, this is way. me. This is not me saying knowing this. I'm just, yeah. you know, assuming they don't care about it as much because they have Katowice and Cologne. Like those are obviously the two flagship events that are always and that by this time, this point in time, everyone considers them ext extremely prestigious. It's for the players when you hear them talk. It's like some of the events that they are most want to win outside of the majors, right? So they have that going for them. And then the Thanks, IM, man. the other yeah. IM stops. I feel like the smartest thing for ESL would be to always host it at a cool location. Sure. Because that's how you get teams to want to come there because they still want to see, you know, travel to cool places. And also as those stops, it's like more exotic. It adds a little bit but of fanfare. But they're fillers as well too. for teams who are chasing the Intel Grand Slam. Right? Oh, yeah, that's a good so point. That, but that's it as well. Like if you're FaZe, maybe you want to go to the IEM Brazil event because you want to get the Grand Slam there. But if you're, I don't know, G2 and you don't have any notches, you're like, well, we can well, skip that Well, you see that they are skipping it. Yeah, like I the saw teams that. Are That's they, interesting. They decided Liquid to skip it. Well, Liquid right? turned it down as well. Yeah. yeah. Liquid turned it down there as well. There was one and more name. G2 was especially maybe. interesting because they didn't qualify for Rio. So you right. would think, well, maybe they go would, check it out. They would yeah. just go see, you know, see what it's, also, what it's like. Also, I think Liquid turning it down, this is just, I want to bring this back up again, but like Liquid turning that down because they said that there's going to be this long stint of Counter-Strike 
that they're going into right now. And if they turn that down, then there's a little bit more time at home. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now you fucked up at groups and now you've got to play showdown <laughs> yeah, that's true. and you're going to have to play showdown instead. So you're just as busy because oh, you yeah. didn't prep for what could have been a layup, bro. Yeah. You had, you know, you get a shit ton of chances. All right. So man, you got seven rounds against big. <laughs> yeah. I mean, true. There's no, no way around it. And the seven map map pool. Man, right, like oh, people. we're gonna do a seven. seven map map we're gonna make a seven map map pool, but we're not gonna practice. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Many, okay. Too Brilliant. many seven map map so, pools. Yeah. So, so here's a, a bit of a digression for you guys. But I, I had this talk on the shuttle in from the airport. Well, so you here's, and Kassad. and, and uh, Effia was with us. Shox, oh. Shox was with us. Shit, so, all right. so this was what I was uh, thinking. Like, like you said, you know, the players they want a time home. Like, look at professional athletes, right? Like, are people in other competitions? You know, you need to move. To a different country and live there on a whim, right? And someone's gonna say, "Yeah, but they get paid millions." Like players don't get paid. It's pretty good. Yeah, they're pennies, not making peanuts, right? Man, like yeah. so, you know, if if you're in a, such a position where you're earning enough for the whole fam or whatever, you know, like that's sort of hey, like this is what we're going to live off of, right? It's just how it goes. So that's a a smaller one, meaning like you sh just need to deal with the fact that you might be away for long periods of time it's not your whole life the counterpoint the counterpoint career. to that is in order for players to perform you know they have to be in a good mental state and if you're the problem with esports and some of these na teams isn't the fact that they're away is that they're going from one place to from one hotel to another hotel yeah. to another hotel like if they were away from home for a month and a half but it was a more of a normal living situation let's say maybe if they had a more of an apartment sort of a thing and Whatever, maybe that would be easier to deal with. But my other point was going to be this, because I also saw someone complain about something for a qualifier or whatever. And to be fair, we used to, we complained about this in 2020 when we had to play the qualifier for Katowice during our Christmas, Orthodox Christmas, right? Okay. That's when it was scheduled for no reason whatsoever, because there was nothing in the calendar after it. But my point was going to be why in sports, there's games on Christmas Day, well, Boxing true. Day. All these days, why? Thanksgiving, why? Because that's when most people can watch can watch, and they're yeah, at yeah. home. And that's where you get, you know, a lot of your viewership comes from them outside of your Super Bowl or the, or the finals of the league or whatever it is. So do we really still have the luxury of not utilizing those, that especially winter, right? Summer mm. doesn't really matter as much. At the to moment, I think we do because of what we are. But I think in the future, if this continues to grow and more teams go in the way of like a regimented Australis where upper management gets a lot of say, right? Or EG. Working out great for them. <laughs> That's not the point. The point Especially is in the communication. We will get there eventually, right? We will get there Shout eventually, out. right? That One will time. happen. And then when that happens, then yeah, you're right. We will have games on Christmas. Because like, hey, you want to get paid this much money? Well, you're going you're gonna to work. You're gonna, we got a tournament that's going to be on. Because like, I know when we're talking about the NBA and stuff, yeah, they're talking squillions of dollars here. But I'm talking maybe 10 years down the track or well, let's hope counter structure around them. But, you know, I think at some point it'll we'll get what you're saying. But this is another thing that like going back to Australia reminded me of and just seeing like all the same things. My family still lives in the same home they did when I grew yeah, up, man. right? And, and being reminded of that, it's like, ah, oh, shit. Like what we're doing has come a very long way in a short period of time. So I think like with what you're saying, yeah, we will get there to that point eventually. But with how we've scaled already over, I was first a paid professional player in 2008. Then how it scaled from there to when I got back into playing and competing overseas in 2013 to where we are now in 2023, almost said 2003. Um, like it's come years, a long Chad. way. It's come a really long way. And I think that's something that like, if you took away from these players, let's say you took these North American players and you said, yep, you don't have this job anymore. You're going to work a normal nine to five. I don't think they would c care about the travel as much anymore, right? They'd be like, actually, you know what? Fucking sign me up. But, you know, the grass is always greener and you don't know what you have until it's gone. And I'm sure I've got plenty of other cliches that I could throw in here for the right. mix, right? But yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I think it's nature of, we say it's like, you know, uh, it's, it's happened quickly, but I think at the same time, a lot of people are growing up. You know, True. a lot yeah. of people have girlfriends and kids, kids like Moses, wives, houses, <laughs> things to get back. He still to. hasn't called back. He did call back, but I had it on silent. Uh, <laughs> but we'll try again later. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right. That's fine. Just, we egoed him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we didn't Sorry, Jason. Him. You've lost your spot. Uh, but yeah, I do think like, you know, it's like we're saying like time away from home. 
you're dead on. It's like if it was if it was in an apartment, well then, you know, a lot of these players are making enough money to support two people. For sure. And I'm not saying like that second person, you know, because I I picture I'm just going to use my own life as an example. If I knew that I was coming to Blast and Katowice, let's say I had two months in Europe straight where I'm chaining together all these events, and I knew that I was staying in one stationary spot, or if I had an apartment here, then you know I could I could bring my girlfriend with me, and yeah. I would convince Sophie to to come live together here and have that still, you know, like roots kind of, right? Yeah. Like you need, you need, w w my favorite part about going home is that I get my routine back. I can wake up whenever, you know, routine and just obviously like time off. Sure. Like there's no, there's no pressing schedule, but I can do the same shit every single day. And as much as traveling the world and doing this is incredibly exciting and fun, there is also a lot of happiness in just the regularity of life, I think. Sure. No, if, for sure. If you're smart about it. Yeah. You know, don't worry. It can also get away from you and can be fucking dark and dreary and depressed <laughs> if you... <laughs> Bit of drug you know. abuse. Yeah. yeah. Like substance abuse. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, you yeah. know, like regularly scheduled drug use is a... You know, maybe that's... A, if you're being responsible about there's it. There's angles, you know, man. You know. As long as we're being responsible. <laughs> as long as we're being responsible. So, yeah, I just think that's the big one. I think people want to go home and, and see their families and see their friends and see their significant others and sleep in their own bed. And play on their computer, or at oh, least that's yeah, what I know. Yeah. I go home and I enjoy. But it, you're gonna get new players who I think this is this is why I always love when like you know it's like the hungry teenagers that you don't give with a the mouse shit. Guys. Yeah. See it with the mouse guys. Yeah. The mouse guys big time, and uh, I think you like you saw that early on as well. Yep. Um, having been at the WePlay lands, like I remember just thinking like, oh, you're not just good in the server. Like they were already a pack of like very professional young men. Yeah, like, that's I'm how noticing they came that across. with the young players. Um, you know, I'm thinking of like Hex right now. Yep. Uh, somebody who is eating, breathing, living Counter Strike, and I don't think he'd rather. Even though he's 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 getting shit on in EG in this most recent event at Blast, right? Had one good map to start it off, bombed out the rest. I bet you he still had a good time being here playing Counter Strike. Yeah. I bet you the entire break he was sat at home getting ready he's not to come in. Yet. Yeah, and and I get that because. W w you're going to reach a point where these other things do matter more to you. Yeah. And that's, that's complete. Honestly, I, I approve of that for some players, right? Like you, you deserve that kind of a life and whatever, not if you want it. Exactly. Yeah. But, but you but can't have your cake and eat it. Exactly. Right. There's, there's a balance you got to strike there. So I don't know. It just, it just pisses me off that they, that, you know, I just, I'm just keep thinking of liquid, but it's like that they came in unprepared and that, it flops or whatever. Maybe they'll not. win this event and Yanko, you know, he'll have to eat yeah. his words. Maybe exactly. they'll have, yeah, they they won't have a sandbag. Win this <laughs> no, they won't win it. I think they'll play much better, but it just it just serves as a reminder that not everybody's fully focused all the time. I think that's what we got to start the year. And mm -hmm. that's fair. And I think also you made a couple of good points there, Connor. I think also it's important to note money isn't everything in life. True. And, and also the fact that, you know, just because you have a good job, like, you know, either working in esports or being a player, doesn't mean like, you know, your significant other can upend their life. Yep. You know, like your girlfriend, it's good for you, right? That she can, you know, in that scenario, come with you for a month and a half. But, you know, some people have just a nine to five job that they like, they enjoy their job, right? And they don't want to quit their job yep. to follow, you know, someone to follow like a, a person around because they don't need to make, to earn money for them to enjoy it, right? Like it's, it's not about that. Like I want to do this, I enjoy doing this. So that's why I understand that for players it's difficult, but at some point, like, like you said, Chad, you need to look at it. And this, this definitely has an expiration date, yeah. right? Like for how long you can be a professional player, same like for how long you can be a professional athlete. So it's like about probably taking advantage of most of it. And the life has a lot of benefits, like traveling the world, right? With, with your friends, teammates competing, right? On the grand scale in front of fans, in front of thousands of people. So sure, but you know, obviously it's not that simple and it's up to everyone to figure it out and find that balance. But you know, the only thing for me is if you can't balance it out and then like just you know, maybe this isn't for you. You can try something. Right? Else, you can't yeah. like be bitching about it and saying how tough it is and how difficult it is. Because in all reality it really isn't. It's, it's pretty easy. And especially nowadays, but yeah. what you said about players being jaded and burnt out i could understand that in 2016 and 17 when it was like from fucking star ladder to to esl event to epicenter to e-league like different continents i remember this ridiculous thing at the end of 2018 where astralis went to three continents in three weeks they yeah, had well, an was this way they, EG they, won? they had no they had yes 2019. no they had an event there was ecs finals in 
Texas, in Dallas, yes, in Arlington. Yeah, yeah. Then it was Pro League Finals in Denmark. And then it was like, or this was 2019. I, I, but there was like, uh, I, I think uh, either it was Blast World Finals in Bahrain that year, or it was something else on like, you know, like Middle East or something like that, where they went for a third event. So th that's insane. Mm. And these are all end of the year events, yeah. which is like you play this league for, for two months or a month to get to this stage. And now when you have to perform, it's like insane. Like, you know, like they go straight from winning the final into a plane and then into media. And then the first game is the next day. Like, it's crazy, right? So back then it, it would make sense. But now, you know, it's, it's not as difficult. Yes, if you're like a middle tier team, it's probably still pretty busy because you have to play these qualifiers as well. But it's not that many lands. We actually have a no, little bit less, less lands, lands yeah. because of the pandemic. But we have more still online tournaments sticking around that went a little bit up there in prize money. So more teams are willing to, to play them. And also this fucking ridiculous thing with the points and the rankings and everything like... Which I, one are you talking about? The ESL the, one? Well, the, the cash cup, the, the cash cup oh, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for ESL so and teams having to play that, like yeah. so many sort of loopholes because to be honest, ESL needs to sort this shit out. I don't know how Liquid is the second ranked team in the world in their ranking. Do, do Heroic you look is at, one, do Liquid you look is at their two. Ranking? What? Do you look at their ranking? I, I looked at it today because I wanted to see what is such a big difference in points between like Liquid and G2. And the thing is, I think they need Pro to League make, finals they maybe? need to make, yes, they need to make their decay stronger. The but the thing, things, but, things need to decay faster. Like they, they can't have the same points. But what are they trying to achieve? Right? They have almost the why same points exist? for second at pro league, like second and yeah. blast world. Yeah. Finals I know why it they, exists, but like who's? I know, but it? it's like at this point, it's not, when they made it, they were trying to probably big dig their ranking a little bit and make their events more important. Yeah. But nowadays you don't need to do that. Look at blast; they give up spot at the world finals for teams that win pro league. Yeah. Right, because they value it in the sense that there's a lot of games being played and whatnot. So I feel like. That needs to change, and that's why here in Kato we have a group with Liquid, Navi, Phase, and G2 are already all in the same group. They're all in Group A, and Phase and G2 are on the same side of the bracket in that group. So they seeded off the world ranking. Yes. So like one why and two, we... one and two t teams that are real, probably one and two in the world right now. Yeah. G2 I mean, phase. if you look at you know, like I mean, I know Heroic is ranked really high up, but you come to playoff time in the arena, are you gonna pick Heroic to beat Phase or G2? Well, let's say Phase. I know G2. Maybe, you know... There's a conversation there. Right? Yep. But no, I'm not picking Heroic yet. Like, sure, they won, that, they won the fall final. They, they got wrecked by outsiders in, in the major final, right? So that, that's my point. And it's like, I feel like even... And people will say, yeah, but what about Liquid Navi? I think, you know, Navi didn't look great. Liquid has been, you know, that I've thought they You're were overrated for months. Not a Liquid For fan. months now, right? So I feel like... <laughs> Even if you just put G2, swap G2 and Liquid or Navi in that bracket, right? So they, they, they don't have to, Phase and G2 don't have to meet sure, each other yeah, yeah. before like the end of the bracket yeah. potentially. I think it would be fine. But, you know, on the other side, out of the four teams, you have Heroic, Vitality, Mouse and Outsiders. Yeah. Which I feel like, again, as much as Liquid is already, I feel um, Outsiders are still a little bit underrated they because they bombed well. out in the world finals, yeah. right? Yep. But who knows? Maybe I'm just a bit no, I feel like if, delusional about it. If Vitality didn't just have a really good event, I don't know. I mean, Vitality looks legitimately good. At, yeah. Legitimately good at Blast. Spinks was playing well. Right? So, yeah. like, I mean, it, Spinks was playing well. Dupree was playing well. That uh, it, it, if they weren't playing well, that side of the bracket, I think, would get so much more flag. I have a question for you, Connor, because me and Chad, we've talked about this previously on the podcast so for me last year like g2 and vitality were two very similar teams in a sense of they have the talent they have the firepower but mm -hmm. they didn't enjoy playing the game like they had way too much pressure on them because the changes they made were like we here's the changes now you have to be the best in the world win yep. everything else doesn't work out super right? high expectations and i think the band a little bit of a what why g2 was able to figure it out a little bit sooner was because they failed to qualify for the major Okay. So that's like the worst thing that could possibly happen for you as a player is to not even get out of the RMR. And that happened and lo and behold, they're still alive. <laughs> you know, the world didn't end. And, you know, they managed to win the world finals. And they, I, the, the thing that changed is they understood the importance of that. So they didn't make any changes. They didn't even bring a different coach. They just stuck with their guy and they show up at blast groups and they were the, the most dominant team by far in that tournament so vitality it looked like a little bit that they also sort of finally realized that they need to 
relax yes. a little bit more. So yeah. I don't know how it looked because I watched only a couple of games. I didn't watch like yeah. much of their stuff. So I think I like this. I like this angle of like psychologically G two hit a point where they just it had to be now type vibe, right? And 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 also I'm gonna give a shout out to Mind Body Esports because oh, their yeah, mental coach, yeah. their mental coach. When I saw him in Abu Dhabi and I saw the things he was already starting to do with them, like I, I think that is. I've, I mean, complexity better call him and see if he has any more free time. Like, something. <laughs> I think he was well, or, 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 Yeah, or, I was going to say, like, man's, man man had real impact <laughs> on he, Or if he can clone himself, like, three times <laughs> right? because it feels like they need that. Save half of esports, man. Um, so I, I think, yeah, you're dead on with G2 in the sense that, like, they had to do something, and then Abu Dhabi just presented it's, like, a great, a great opportunity. I think the thing with Vitality is it's not something that's happened in the past, Barring again, their disappointments, right? They were like built to be EPL a super though, team. Right? Yeah, but yeah, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, all right. I'm, just, no, I'm not saying I'm like it's, saying. it's a legit win. It's a yeah. legit win. They beat yeah, Liquid in the final three two though. Like it was a uh, I'm, okay. So what you're saying is like they're not well, at ultimate. Okay, yeah, okay, I'm following. So you know, G two Vitality, both their struggles comparable. That's all in the past. G two had something like Abu Dhabi, which is a phenomenal opportunity coming up. And I think they hit a harder rock bottom than Vi than Vitality yeah. did. I think Vitality right now, it's Paris. It's Paris that's coming up. I mean, yeah, yeah. Vitality so is a French organization. You know, no, I mean, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it could be. That would be worse. Be. Than, that would be like, it yeah, would be. Okay, yes. right. It's Ugh. like, it's it sort of like worse. Vitality when they created this team. Not that we knew Paris was going to happen, right? It's just that. If they had known that it happened mm. when the team was announced, surely their long-term vision would have been, we need to be world's number one so that we can contend at the major in Paris, right? Sure. That would have been their Makes goal. Sense. And now that pops up. So suddenly it's just like on their radar is this massive blip. You're a French organization. You have the best French player to have ever touched the game. You have, you know, you have been built and you were bought and created to become world number one, there was never supposed to be a different expectation, right? Sure. With the amount of money they pay that team, it's like, you better be in top three. And they haven't been at all. And Spinks's addition kind of slowed it down for a little bit. But it to me, it's like, I think the comparison, if we're, if we're comparing those two teams, it, it's not that, it's not that Vitality failed for Rio. It's that they have to do something in Paris. But you raise a very, this is a very good point just in general though, because diff every team has different timelines, right? Like this is the crazy thing. Like we don't start a year and everyone starts at the same starting line, right? Yeah. We have teams who, like for example, not only in terms of the partner teams for Blast get extra reps in and land, which you could argue both ways. Is it a positive or is it a negative? Well, you can only tell in hindsight for those teams. And then you can only even tell in hindsight after the fact if the ramifications are good or bad, right? Coming in here, you can say, yeah, Vitality, it looked good. But imagine if they shit the bed here. Well, they got overconfident. You know, they weren't as focused as they needed to be. They needed a loss. That you could make those, depending on how it goes, or they come in and go, wow, they fucking cracked the code. They're looking great. But the timeline you're posting for Vitality is to peak for the major the yep. blast in Paris, right? Whereas the timeline for G two, well, I guess their timeline got reset Here's the when point. they lost Rio. There, there's no timeline. True. The only timeline is win. Let's have fun. I mean, this let's sounds bad. Fun. Hold no. up. No, let's no, no, all hold hands. No, 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 no. I didn't phrase this properly. The, the only timeline is like you can't jump steps. There's a quote. I'm gonna fuck it up again, but it was like <laughs> Warren Buffett who said like, you know, something like things take time to mature right like a baby takes nine months to be out if you impregnate nine women you're still not at the same months. time yeah. it's not gonna come out in one month right like it's still it takes time so you can't jump steps you can't rush things what's important is to make see if the team can work first which you know you assume it can because you've done your research before you put the team together or made the changes or brought in the players and then you just need to work on the atmosphere here's the uh, sort of a uh, trick the, the tricky part with what you said about vitality and paris and you know let's say okay that that's when they you, you want to peak then and everything and like these events don't really matter as much but then that matters for all of them together so that's again and too much pressure so here's the thing mm. there's a big difference between those players know regardless of what you say that they the team is built to be number one right and they feel that they can be number one and realistically they have everything to be number one but there's a difference between someone saying that to them and that sort of being publicly the expectation being put on them like they're of course working towards that right and it's the job of everyone around the players 
to sort of you don't want to go into Paris and be like, guys, we have to do good here. Sure. You don't want that because yeah. that's the pressure coming in. And yeah. if you're not able to play loose, I mean, we saw what happened at the major, even at the RMR, G2 choking, phase fucking it up in, in Rio, right? Vitality as well, getting eliminated by ants. Ants at that point in time, right? Like still going through these changes and, 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 and so on. So I feel like that's your job as a head coach, like, you know, that, that Robin still gets so fucking underestimated. And I loved what Carrigan said in the HLTV interview and praised him. It's like, you know, it's being able to create that sort of an atmosphere where you're confident but not arrogant. And you understand, like, the pressure doesn't really, like, affect you as much at the moment because you've trained for this and you're enjoying your time with your teammates. You enjoy playing the game with your teammates and you're playing for your teammates. Like, you you, you know, you're, you want to get there together you want to do it yourself but you want to do it with them too right and that goes to the coach through the sports psychologist to the fucking trainer to i don't know who from the general everyone right the message needs to be the same and that's how you get into this sort of a zone where the major isn't just another tournament yeah. the same as the major in france especially isn't just another tournament for vitality and you can't pretend that it is that way but you need to manage your sort of expectations and understand that anything can happen you can do everything correctly and still lose right to to a lower team you can still lose to a very good team at some point they were just better on the day mm. right so i think that's with these teams because the players and the level of play has gone up so much right like the counter strike everyone knows how to play it a lot of the top teams they understand that they can outplay each other you're not gonna win a game through strategy right you're not gonna out maneuver the other team sure. you know phase is not gonna out maneuver g2 or g2 isn't gonna out maneuver navi and so on it's gonna be your players stepping up in big moments and being mentally tough to not let shitty situations affect you and mentally reset pretty much every round i, I had it when so this is this is embarrassing chad stories another one <laughs> so when i was competing and we were playing in the the asian minors right well the expectation was for us to win so yeah right and when we were in games, like I was talking to the IHC guys today, or I was trying to talk to them. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully, I was trying to get them to open up a bit more. I was trying to say, you guys, you know, you, you, you're nice guys. Let's talk a bit more. But regardless, uh, when we were playing against the Mongols, for example, like I'm finding myself in a situation with a shot that I should never miss, ever. And I'm ab above drop with a Mag 7 and machine guns below me. He's not looking at me. I missed three shots. Because I'm so worked up first of all, to in-game lead the team and micromanage and make sure we're winning rounds, that I have no focus on my crosshair. Or the, the one thing that fucking matters. I have no focus on it because I put myself in such a position where we have to win this. We're the best team from the region. If we lose this, it's fucking embarrassing. Like we still qualified, right? It was fine, but we lost those games. And I put a lot of that onto me just being a full-on mental collapse back then because yep. dealing with that I, me being the favorite in international counter-strike sorry what you know and and that's another embarrassing well, child story i wish i had you know this attitude that i have now back when i first started coaching mibr because mibr was exactly that with with fallen fur and cold who won you know two majors called two-time player of the uh, world's best player with Tarek and Stewie also won a major right Tarek was the mvp of that so you have all these guys also culturally <laughs> culturally <laughs> it was a bit dude. difficult right that was the year the, the year they won was the year i joined just the second part of the season True, 2018, yeah, yeah. right so understanding that you need to make them sort of work like work together and kind of mesh and and have a good atmosphere right and whatnot i was just so zoned in on the counter strike because that's when i knew best yeah, and yeah, i felt yeah. like i could do it with that so we go to the first major with that team a month after i joined two months after i joined the london major we played the opening game against fucking tai lu in a best one and we lose to tai lu like we had a bit of a you know there was some stuff within the team that was a bit Fucked. A problem that got sorted out after that game and we managed to get to make top four in, in that event in the end but you could tell in that game as we're losing and playing it's like the players are extremely stressed the communication is awful right because something that's not supposed to happen ever in a million years is happening exactly. you're somehow losing to tai lu mm. right like on a map you felt pretty good on and the reason for that as well is things like that happen because you need to be humble. You need to have humility when you play, especially nowadays. And I think people have that nowadays because everyone's like much better 
today, but you can't take any game for granted. Sure. Like you yeah, need yeah. to respect every opponent. Of course, even today you play against Tai Lu, you're not gonna feel like you're playing phase, but you need to understand you're not playing a, a face it stack, right? Like you're still playing playing a professional team that if you are not focused, if you're not taking them seriously, they can beat you as well, yeah. right? And and you, you can ruin your tournament by one loss because of, you know, the bracket or the seeding and make it much more difficult for you to have a good result. Yeah, I, look, so I think this big conversation here is really just about building the healthy culture within the environment. And I want to kind of dial this back in maybe to what we do because I look at um, when you guys are doing the Blast events and I've been at a couple of Blast events, sure. right? You know, I worked a few. Um, and I always thought that the culture there was was really good. What was curated with everybody that was around, right? And and you see that in the end product, right? You so mean the people working, yeah, like the the blast. talent, the, yeah, the the people in production, oh yeah, like yeah. and that's one of the keys over there. Like Smed, I think we've spoken about him on the show a whole bunch of times. Martin, right? Fuck yeah, Martin. He's fucking great, right? And when it starts, when when it starts there, well, I guess it really starts with Nicholas, right? But or at least it used to. When I used to work at Blast Events, but you could there's a whole it has a whole vibe about it, right? And and you can see that reflected in the quality of the show. And this is something that I want us to be a little bit more cognizant of, like this year, right? And I've been talking to Alex, and I've been talking to Hugo and Harry about this, and like it's just in our group of people we're just doing our job to bring a better vibe because we've all seen the different eras of talent and you know clashes of personalities and everything like that, and that can like negatively affect everybody doing their job on a day to day, right? From our end. And we, most of the politics with the now side of things, it stays in the shadows, most of it. Some of it gets brought to the surface. But I feel like, like for me coming into this year, and I don't know why I'm trying to be a positive fucking Pete, but I'm just like, and I think it was Rio last year where the vibes kind of shifted. I think I'm it, like, hey, yeah. yeah, let's, let's, this is fucking fun. Let's have fun yeah, with man, each other. I, I, again, like, you know, I've, what, I've been casting for like, I've been casting for seven years. I feel like I've been at, tier one events for maybe 2019 is kind of where it started. And then we were sideline pandemic and now we've come into it. And I feel like the, the pandemic was sort of like a, a bit of a reset. Joe. You know, everybody kind of got time away. So if there was anything, you know, I feel like some hatchets got buried and whatnot, but dude, fucking during Christmas break, Rush Lee's team speak. Oh yeah. I mean, fucking crazy. We didn't get to play games with you, Yanko. I don't know you what you're up to. You can come by anytime. Anytime I you want. The IP, well, I, but... I, I renewed my PC now. So. Okay, yeah. So because <laughs> I, I know to, you're a gamer, bro. I, I need to get some Anubis reps. Well, you you remember from last Kato. year from this event? Yes, exactly. So yeah, yeah. shout out Katowice. Last year we had like a you know oh, ESL room, ESL right? giving yeah. us a, a like a conference room at the hotel that was just PCs for the talent. Yeah. And so you know there was always at least five people in there. I think they decided against it after three. <laughs> 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 they were just like. Here's a PC in yeah. your room and your frisbees room, right? and you can all go to your room uh, yeah. you've been yeah. naughty alright yeah. yeah. fuck that's true eh? um, so yeah we are. We do have them back in our room but, but I think that's just the instance of like you know it gave us a, it gave us like an outlet to just be gaming together yeah and um, you know I, I've had I've had very very few issues with other talent uh, throughout my time in Counter-Strike but name them I'm kidding <laughs> don't name them don't name them definitely don't name them <laughs> <laughs> um nobody nobody here nobody anymore and i think nobody like, in this room right now nobody in this room here right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah shit we're safe um <laughs> it's just like i think over the christmas break you know we had a bunch of a bunch of the talent and i mean you know we had we had, we had moses i would join so yeah. okay let me backpedal here we would just it kind of felt like at any point during the player break for the talent you could jump on team speak you didn't, like sometimes you know you'll organize your five stack by texting each other yo when you guys getting on and yeah. like some of us are operating on North American time zones yeah. so it's like we got to put some organization into playing CS but throughout this Christmas break was the first time in my life that I would get up in the morning do whatever the hell I wanted and when I jumped on TeamSpeak there would be at least five people sitting on that TS from the Counter Strike broadcast crew that were just down to play Counter Strike yeah and at times there were more than ten people yeah we had was, multiple yeah. five player stacks going on I'd get on Moses is just sitting down in a channel on his own playing some kind of you know probably playing Halo or he's playing, he was just he's he was playing, just refragging he was playing just crossfire yeah. instead of just right. going to a fucking Lamaze class but never mind <laughs> 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 I'm not kidding I'm sure he went to all of those Jay, Jay <laughs> and let him otherwise well you know what's funny is right now I see him on Steam he's playing Death Stranding. Yeah, I saw that as well. So the director's death, cut. In Death Stranding. And isn't that just a game where you're just 
you're carrying shit carrying, from one point to you're another. carrying shit from what? one point to another but you also have you have a baby on you <laughs> oh so the game's about so babies he's like bro. learning that's his way of learning yeah. how to treat a child if yeah, I, mean, I, I haven't played it but i know there's some like intertwined yeah, i just feel like a baby in a bucket and some juice and you got to carry it baby around at some in point a bucket and some yeah it's like juice. an umbilical cord attached to i don't know man okay it's well. I don't know how it works, but I just know that there's you definitely have to care for a child at some point. And yeah, so okay. I guess Moses on his off time, he's really he's really going all in. He's role playing. Yeah, he's ah. even like, you know, in case the zombie apocalypse does yeah. come in, <laughs> I know what to do. But I think the reason for what you said as well is, you know, we've had and this was also this event last year where we kind of Jason actually did a thing where he got these like electronic like photo frames, right? Oh, where you can yeah, up digital yeah. photo frames sure, yeah. where you upload photos to it and he sort of like got us together, like me, Chad, Alex, uh, and Trace, right? Because he he was like, Listen, it's just us left sort of of the you know, all from five years and he, and his point was he gave one to each of us and was like, just upload, you know, photos. And then it's like all the photos, it's a shared folder. Sure. So then it just shuffles through the photos and everyone uploads whatever they have on their phone. Because, you know, like never again are we going to have the times of 2016, 2017, yeah. when we were all like younger, you know, like guys in their 20s. We were 20s. definitely younger. We were younger. <laughs> but guys, you know, like basically, you know, guys in their 20s with like, uh, extra cash and traveling the yeah, world man. and having fun and having yeah. a good time, right? And it was also realization. Discovering the rock star life. Before, before he said that, we were standing at the bar and, you know, around me, it's Harry, Hugo, Dinko, yep. right? It's not just that it's newer guys and Harry and Hugo have been casting for a while at, at that point. Just like it's younger guys. It's like, you so, know, like fucking Dinko's 10 years younger than me or some shit yeah. or, you know, so you it's all, it also hits you because when I first started doing talent... I had Richard, Duncan, Jason, Anders, Semler, right? Like they were all older than me and of course more experienced. So I was like kind of the younger guy and learning from them. Yeah, sure. And like they were taking helping me with well, stuff and taking care of me. So now you also realize like you're passing, you know, the, to the next generation. In a sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's up to us. Yeah, that is that's key. a little bit to not, you know, they're not fucking toddlers, right? Like they can take care of themselves. But just like, you know, point the thing out here and there if you see it. And when it comes to also the what you said, pandemic, and you started in 2019, where also you didn't really, we didn't really hang, you didn't have opportunities to hang out yeah, as that's much. True. The yep. events were remote and there was more online stuff. So, you know, you don't really, it's different when you get to know people in person and hang out with them and see what people are like off broadcast, you know, and, and just chill with them. So I think, again, we have, we've been so lucky in CS. I mean, you consider this maybe like a, a different sort of, generation to yeah. an extent right but it's also like a really cool group of people i don't feel like there's any you know big issues or i think we it, there's just been i think again in like the last year or so there's just been this bridging of the gap of that that generational gap that exists you know i've come yeah. up with harry and hugo you know harry and hugo have been two of my best friends this entire time that i've been casting because we got Poor the you. same chances <laughs> yeah <Poor soul. laughs> i mean hugo's all right <laughs> Shout out to Harry. Oh, Harry. Yeah. Just trolling you, bro. Yeah. It's like, you know, um, I, I feel like, you know, those are two those are two people who I became friends with. Why, or like, we were friends first and then we became colleagues because Joe. we started to get more chances together. Um, and then obviously, you know, I mean, even when I met the two of you guys at first, it's like, you know each other better than you know me. Mm. You already have your pack. If, if we're going to go out for a dinner... Fuck, we all know how difficult it is to organize a dinner for the entire talent team, yeah. all 15 people or something like that. So it just makes sense that at first there are kind of there are kind of factions. They're not even like factions because that makes it sound like we're warring. We're just people who know each yeah, other it's, better it's than just, they know yeah. other people. Like, you know, yeah. you guys who do the whole blast circuit. I mean, obviously you spend a lot more time exactly. together. So. Yeah. But I think we, we made an effort. At, in Rio specifically, I know we talked about it. So let's try to get people a little bit more yeah, together. Yeah. We don't want to have clans there no, and sort exactly. of like, right? So yeah, and and that, that's uh, that I think it's been very effective in the last until year. Until Capirinas were had at the beach. Up until then, everything was going smoothly. And then... Then it started. wasn't. Yeah. But then it was again. I don't know. We had... That was the same day. We made we made that fantastic sandcastle. Oh, yeah. We were digging <laughs> holes. Dig a hole in the beach, yeah. man. I was oblivious. I literally had my head in the sand. Yeah. And... And that was a wonderful day, I thought. Yeah, it was a fun day. It was day. a fun old it day, man. Fun. And that, that was like one of those moments where it's like, we're just we're just people, like, no matter where the event is, shout out Rio for that reason. Like, how many times do you get to just be on the fucking beautiful beaches of Rio? Yeah. And you look around and who are you with? Like, well, otherwise, yeah, I might be with my girlfriend or my family or something, or my friends from back in Montreal, but I'm not. I'm with you guys. So how can you not become friends with the people that you're sharing these incredible yeah, moments exactly. with? 
And uh, I do notice that about your crew. Well, I don't, I'm just bringing back Division. Uh, I do notice that when I see Blast events on, you guys tend to go out and I, you know, you're playing putt putt golf and you've got to fucking. Hell yeah, man. Or, Every time we're there. But yeah. even even just the individuals, for example, I know when it was like uh, Pala, Maui, and Blair who were here, like they were going to the gym together. The night they shifters. Doing, yeah, right. So, like. <laughs> I don't know how that shit ended up on our show. <laughs> Why am I watching fucking Pala doing squats? Yeah, Why am bro. I watching Maui to rice and like. To tell it to me like I'm eating Wagyu beef, you know. This was like <laughs> this so weird. Yeah. Like, so if I come in and, and want to post like me and Kasad like doing a traditional Serbian dance, is that gonna get I would the show love as well? It is could that, I is would, that I would how watch starved that. we are for content? <laughs> I would Jesus watch that. Christ! <laughs> I'd watch the, that every day. The, the re- only reason that I think that it was like a bit weird is because the event was meant to be advertising Malta. <laughs> We're sure, yeah. Cat Cat of pizza, pizza. yeah. Cat, <laughs> like, hashtag Zentai rice. <laughs> yeah, Zentai <laughs> yeah rice, it yeah. still sticks with me, man. Know, I, I definitely need to like change my role within the broadcast because I didn't get to see shit in Rio. I was just like had so much yeah, work all mm, the time yeah, yeah. and everything. But you know, I was gonna say Castle Life, dude. But, half days, baby. You know That's why Chad's never going back to analysis. <laughs> you know, man. who also didn't get to see shit in Rio. Who? Nico and G two, baby. Oh. But what they've done, what they've done since then is they figured it out. Chad won World Finals, won their group, and they're coming in hot to Katowice. They're probably the hottest team right now. Yeah. Well, unless Faze gets say unless that. unless Faze gets a stand in for this event as well. Okay. Then they'll I be the hottest saying. team because phase with the stand in is just like unbeatable. I feel like sure. if you if you look at Carrigan's tournaments in phase, because even with the old phase, he had the all of thing and uh, where exist. they played they played they won a tournament with exist, won a tournament with Chroman. Yep. So Jesus. So if you look at phases tournaments with a stand in and without a stand in during Carrigan's in game leadership leadership, I think it's gonna be like closer than you think, right, in terms of like how successful they yeah, were. Yeah. But uh, I think for me, those two teams, G2 and FaZe, are still the main favorites. But, okay, fuck those teams. We okay. talk about those teams all the time. All right. Let's talk about the teams in the play-ins because Yo, there's a it. lot of teams in the play-ins and in the main event. I guess Mao's and Outsiders too. I can't say main event. In the group stage. Sorry, Carmack. Uh, in, in the group Hired. stage. <laughs> pay deducted. Um, let's see the money coming out of the account. <laughs> but who we haven't seen play yet. Who, For example, Furia and Mao's haven't played since their semi-finals in Rio. Yep. That was on, what, the 14th or Cloud 13th? Nine, of, Cloud9 as well. Didn't play Didn't Cloud9 play... Really? They haven't played any? I thought nope. they played... Didn't they? Fuck. It's just like, these are names that you know can be going deep in tournaments. Well, they did at the last major. And we haven't seen them play in all this time. So, like, I was talking to Art today. Well, I was actually talking to Drop. Drop told me first that they were in... Gonna kick Art? No. <laughs> that, uh, that they were... They've been in... Serbia for a month before this event boot camping. That's good to know. I bet they'll be prepared for this. Yeah, event. yeah, they'll, they'll be prepared. They're going to fucking. They're going into the playoffs, baby. You, yep. but no, don't be facetious, Yanko. <laughs> no, Kate. I mean, no, I'm not being facetious. They're going. I'm just sh- saying, they're like, going straight to a quarterfinal. Food in Serbia, like you know, they're going to be happy all the time. They're oh, eating shit. well. They're practicing that, like, like the setups. I think the, when they go there, they're like stay at a nice hotel because blast one time. Well, during the online era, they like sorted them out. They sent them the PCs, and I think they like that sort of a setup when they're in their hotel and just playing from a conference room. Yeah. Serbia, so Serbia saved online Counter Strike. Yeah, it, did. it really pandemic, did. By the way, it, it really absolutely did. did. <laughs> You're welcome. Hell yeah! Played a Stock big role. I still haven't been. I haven't been. We'll we'll get it. We'll we'll oh, sort yeah. that out. All right, Chad. All right. It was my first European event, World Championships 2016, with oh. Efrag. Oh. Yeah. I was at that one. Shit. No, you were at 2015. Oh, what were we doing in 2016? Right. Why'd you miss it? Oh no, I was just there. I just visited. No, I, don't know. I think it clashed with something. It was I was I was there live, but okay. uh, yeah, I don't I don't remember why I didn't end up doing it. So Fury is a name. Outsiders are another name. Slatch onto any of these you want, boys. Cloud Nine, Mouse. Uh, outsiders are not in the plane. I'm gonna throw one. Okay. No, but you know. I'll throw one out that we haven't even mentioned yet. I, I'm I'm saying, I'm saying Spirit. Okay, yeah. I'm saying yeah. Spirit semifinal again. Oh, okay. So a deep run. Like, the thing with Spirit that is, like, I think they're very, very skilled individuals across the board. And I think Siren's growing more into his own as that more supportive anchor role player in the team. I don't know where Wonderful's ceiling is. Mm. Like, we've seen him have good moments. And he's solid. He's a good player, right? He's a very good player. I wonder how good he really can be. Like, because he's not flashy in play style like Monacy. But he does have those moments in him so 
Will we see him in a moment where he just does something fucking mental? The kid's, what, 17? Him and Patsy were on yeah. the like Rookies of the Year list with Monacy for yep. last year in the Hate TV Awards. Like, uh, Spirit's a good shout. And I always get high on Spirit after a break. Because <laughs> yeah. I know that Magic's just fucking... <laughs> he just played Counter-Strike yeah. the whole time. Boris the fucking butcher. But then every time I'm a little bit... Mm, right? So I... I am excited for Spirit. I actually picked uh, Patsy and Wonderful for my fantasy team for the Plains. You son of a bitch. I, I picked those two. I, I went hard. I, I think Spirit, maybe what they need is just a good win, like a, a good run at the tournament. You know, Yes, they made the playoffs of the major, right? But then they lose to Heroic. So if they can like make the playoffs here and let's say beat a phase or a G2 or a Navi in the quarterfinals or something like that, right? Like it's if a they, cementing win. Yes, if they have like that sort of a confidence boost, I, I think they don't have a problem with confidence. I think they feel that they're good, but also until you get a good yeah. win, it, you can't even yeah. like really con confirm it to yourself, right? So I think they're really close. I, I like watching them play. I said last year, next to Monesi, Patsy was my favorite guy to play, like in terms of how fun to watch uh, he really is. So I like them. And also I'm excited to see Fnatic play again. Okay. Because I for Fnatic, it's, there's not as much firepower probably as you look at some of these other teams, but there's a very good level of team play that happened very early on because that team wasn't together for a long time and they, had, they played well at Pro League, which was a lot of games, right? And then uh, they made playoffs uh, of the major as well, which no one expected. People didn't have them going out of challenger stage. I did, but I didn't have them making the, the, the playoffs. I didn't think they had, you know, they had it in them yet at that time. So I guess you wonder if the players, you know, the players obviously for them to have even more success, someone needs to step up even more. Whether it's going yeah. to be, you know, Nikodos or, or Roy or yeah. Fash. Yeah. I feel like Crims... The Nikodos bounce back, I think, has Crims to Crims' carry years are behind them, yeah. but his years where he's the rock, and we heard that in interviews at the major talking to them, like they were all praising him and how calming of a presence he is in those stage games in that state, you know, and they said he, he told them he lives for those stage games. That's what, what he loves to, where he loves to play. So I feel like that's where he could help them out the most. Mezzi, it seems like there's nothing he can't do in this game. Like he played pretty much in every role. And as an in-game leader, I feel like he's done... He's doing a good an, ad job. an admirable yeah. job, really, and you know the coach and the coaching staff, everything. Like at Fnatic, the way they function at the moment, it, it feels good. So, you know, it's the first event for them. I feel like also for a long time. I don't know if they maybe played something online. Did they play after the, CCT the major? Thing, probably. Maybe? Probably. probably. Their last event was Espoo. Yeah, that's right. But that was right Masters. after. That was, was like a week one, after yeah. the major, which they won for the record. Yeah, that was a week after the major. But yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see them play. Ents won show. the last event they played. Like we haven't mentioned Ents yet. They won. Was the C that was the CCT thing. Was they, they won that. So yeah. Ents is in a curious situation with just the play-in. If we don't even talk about the main event, you know, I, I think sorry, I think they might have played that thing to get enough points for the play-in. <laughs> oh, I'm not really? sure. Uh, okay. I'm not sure where they were. Maybe I'm okay. just lying. But yeah. so Ents is curious because right, I think of of all the teams that are going to play play-in, even if you don't make it through from the top of the bracket, right? Yeah. So like the in my mind, Furia. OG, Spirit, Cloud9. Also, okay. Maybe Fnatic instead of OG. It doesn't matter. Point being, when when any of those teams get knocked down to the lower bracket, I still think that like most of them are just going to feast. Um, but Ents is currently set up to play versus Big for a spot in the main event. Not an easy game. Odds are we're... I mean, odds are we're not getting one of those two teams. Okay. Ents or yeah. Big, which to miss... To miss the main Kato, I think that would be a bit of a big deal. So, like the group stage of Kato, the group stage of Kato. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Karma. Sorry, I'm from, I'm from Blast. I don't know the rules yeah, here. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wandered if you, in. If you don't dude. watch your mouth, you're gonna stay there. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing about uh, Ants, right? Ants. So Ants, Ants, first half of last year, great, great right? But the, the point was they were playing this more of a gambling style. They make the changes in the m middle of the year. And they want to play more default, right? Which is sort of the way to be more consistent and really be a contender and whatnot. And so the first couple of months, you give them, you know, the benefit of, you know, they need time to get used to that, for Snappy to get used to that way of calling. San Pius is a big part of that, right? As a secondary caller. And then at the major, they sort of exceed expectations, right? Just yeah, one yeah. game away, really, from knocking out Vitality in the one-two game and, and one game away from the playoffs. And now it's been like six months. So now you're sort of... That, that trial period and giving them time to figure it out, like, sure, they're not at 100% yet, but 
now you want to start seeing some results. Now you don't have the excuse anymore. We've changed styles. We're still getting adjusted to it. At this point, the adjustment period is over. And now you're, you need to give us at least some results to see if this can work like with this particular line. I agree. I agree. But do you think that the state of Counter-Strike right now should stop teams from being so jumpy? Because like, okay. You look at the second half of last year, so many different trophy winners over the course of those six months. And then you come into this year, let's say we have another different trophy winner. It's not an Outsiders, it's not a phase, it's not a G2, it's not a Heroic. It's Vitality. But it could, like, let's say it is Vitality. Mind you, they do with Pro League. So, True, hold on. okay. That's still so actually let's not say it's Liquid for Yanko's sake. Let's say it's Liquid, right? Liquid. Why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> let's Asshole. say it's, Well, pick another name. Spirit. Okay, Spirit, right? So let's say Spirit win, and then we go on to the next event, and someone else wins, and then Ents eventually win a trophy. How do we even look at Counter-Strike at that point when so many different teams are winning so many different trophies? Because we're either going to... When we've had periods like this before, so I like to think about the Gambit versus uh, Immortals final. After that, who was born? Astralis. Astralis was born in the ashes of that event right after that they went and they kind of invented the reinvented themselves and they came out and then they end up becoming this fucking best team in the world and then we have this dominant era well now we're in an, another uncertain period where obviously the level of counter-strike is higher than it was in 2017 that's not a doubt and so many more teams are pumping in more resources to try and win that's true as well but are we in the era now where we're building the next beast and we don't know it? Like, we're not going to know it until it happens, but it's so hard to pin the tail on the fucking donkey, mate. I think it is, and you know why? Look at the second part of last year, different team won every tournament. How many teams made changes? G2 made changes in the summer. Vitality made changes in the summer. Heroic made changes right before the summer. Outsiders as well, changes right before the summer. And now you had Navi make change, well, basically at the tail end of the year. So yeah, those teams were up and down last year, but now they've sort of had those trial and Should error be stabilizing periods. Now. So you can see G2 okay. seem to have figured out at the very end, right? Vitality, probably so as well, not in terms of results, but they understood what they needed to do coming into this year. Yep. That's how at least it looks like from the Couple outside. Steps behind. Outsiders, they had a good run at the major, a weaker opposition in the playoffs, not to, you know, fault of their own, but they also understood they were missing something and made a player change, right? It's reminiscent of EG kicking Aoi 2000 after reading TI. Dota you know, reference. Like, right? Whoa. Yeah, which I don't know. I don't remember if that worked out for them or not. <laughs> I know they didn't win the next one. But it happened. Um, but it happened, right? So, and that takes balls, man. That takes guts to, you know, so quickly, you know, so recent to your major win to to change a player, but they understood that was an upgrade for them and they pulled the trigger yeah. on it and they're probably going to be better for it, right? So I think... I also think Jame integrates faster than most. So, I, you know... Yeah, yeah. And, and for Navi, um, sure, like MPL, it didn't work out, like World Finals didn't look great, didn't look great in groups, but man, if I'm going to give anyone the fucking benefit of the doubt of bringing in young players, it's going to be Blade. Blade. Yeah. Like, no one, half of the people didn't hear about Perfecto. He was good immediately from when he joined, and now he's, like, so good. He's, like, the second star now behind Simple, it feels like, with Bit falling off a little bit or whatnot, yeah. and Electronic having to in-game it, right? He's the one who's helping them win games by stepping up. So even Bit, when he first joined, on some maps when Flamey was playing, he wasn't looking great. He sure. looked like sort of a uh, flop, right? Like a bust. But once he got the reps in and, you know, it's not just you getting experience. is you giving Blade things to shit on you about, right? Like to, to you giving him film to point out to you and help you learn faster, right? Sure, like yeah. Because now that's what, you know, for simple saying, this was like MPL now has like, a stretch of games where it's like, okay, these are the main things you need to stop doing. And sure. these are the main things you need to keep doing. And we're going to be fine, right? And that's like the way you, for a young player, you just want to make the game as simple as possible for him. For him, right? Even though the game is more complicated for the team even. For him, you make it simple. And then, you know, you have guys like Electronic, Simple, Bit even, who can carry a little bit of that extra load and, you know, do the extra work, which they're used to doing. So I'm, I'm, that's why I can never... Yeah, Navi has, hasn't looked great for, for a while, but I can never write them off. I'm never sure, going to count exactly. them out. Yeah, I'm never yeah. going to say Navi's not making the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that group for me is like, you have Navi phase and G2 there. Well, I think that those are the three things that will make it out. So I guess if you're a playing team, just pray that you go to group B. 
<laughs> you know, well, we have discussed that Group B does look a little bit weaker on paper, right, for sure. I, I think the thing is, we can say that now, but we don't know what's going to happen until like the tournament starts. We don't know how good some of these teams are going to be just because of the unknown quantities. But I'm going to take a bit of a tangent here, gentlemen. Here's something we do know. I don't know if you guys have just checked this. I was just having a look to see if, if Jason was online. But we've got some call times for tomorrow. I want to hit you guys with the hard facts for tomorrow. The first day of the event. Shuttles leaving from hotel. I won't say the name. 8.35 a.m. Stunner. Y&K, Peacemaker, Machine, Sponge, Banks, Shocks, Maui, Kassad, Hugo, Harry, Heku. Mm. That's an early one. I didn't hear my name. No. Uh, as we make our way down the list, Connor, <laughs> Connor comes in <laughs> at the 2.15 shuttle time alongside of Bart of Hawker, Duff Mike, yeah, and man. of course, Launders. So, I guess we're fucked, Yanko. What and time was the first game start, did you say? 11. And you're on the 845. We're on uh, a 935. Eight, oh, sorry, 835 shuttle. 835. So the so call we'll, time so you're is gonna, 9. We'll be there by 9. Yep. And then we'll... Here's what I say. You did this on purpose, Chad. <laughs> you did this on purpose because you want a beta reaction from yeah, me. Here you we want, go. You want me to lose my mind and like... You know, go crazy and start saying, why are we there so early it. when the game is so late? I'm just going to sit around there for an hour. No, that's not me, Chad. That hasn't been me in Rio either. In Rio, I was consoling you. Yeah. You lost faith and I was, yeah, I was helping I you. So the reason for this is I never mind shit on day one. Okay. It's the first event Good of take. the year. Good take. Even though it's like the 15th time we're in Katowice. In, the, in that building even, but it's a new stage. It's new a new setup. setup. There's new moving toys. elements. It's a bit of a different concept. Right, so for day one, I can come in at 6 a.m. Whoa. I don't care. Like, if you want to make it, make sure everything's running smoothly because I don't want to be the fucking guy who's there at the telestrator standing there telling people, telling me everything's working and it's set up, and then it's not, right? I'd rather be there early, make sure it's actually working so I don't stand there with my dick in my hand. Well, you're the man to fix it. That's why we bring you to these things, of right? Of course I am. The tech guy. So I don't mind this for day one, and the day one is going to pass, and if there's some technical issues, they will be ironed out. I'm hoping they, there won't be. And then I, I myself do this. I, I go to the producer and I say, hey, listen, I understand. It was day one today. That's fine. Can we push it like 30 minutes, 45 minutes for tomorrow? Right? Like, you know, the, cha the setup is not changing at this point in time. Everything's the same, just like we left it. And that still gives us plenty of time. We're still going to be sitting around on our asses for 45 minutes. I mean, it's people coming in and out of makeup, but that's, you know, five minutes. It's not that long, but... There's another reason, and this is not me, but there's another reason why cold times are the way they are. It's not because there might be traffic in Katowice and we, we, the oh, trip is going to be an hour. Here we it's go. Not. It's because some people wake up, put pants on, and go to the shuttle. So if the, if the fucking cold time was earlier, well, you would have uh, the broadcast, you know, still sounding like they just woke up because they did, right? And... That's fine if you function like that. I don't. I don't mind. But people have different ways. I if I'm doing if I'm working early, I want to wake up, have breakfast, take go time. back to the room, shower, and sort of like just take advantage of the fact that I have to be up early. Mm. If my cold time was like scrawny, I wouldn't wake up for fucking breakfast. I would probably sleep in a little bit and then just you know work out and eat at the venue. Or I've, something I've like never that. seen Connor say in the WhatsApp group, "I'm in the lift." I've never seen that. <laughs> That's the classic. He's never been it? in the lift. Nah, man. Paula, forever stuck in the lift, of course. I don't mind calling people out, Chad. Well, Paula is always... He's not alone. Always, There's other late people. Yes, but he's always he's in always lift. Late. He's, he's always late. He's always, always in lift. Dude. It's like, fine. He's always in... And when I see... The, I left him one time in Cologne. In, in Cologne last year. I just told the, okay. dri told the guy to drive. Peace. Because it was five minutes late already, and I saw the message in lift, and I told him, go, because that's another five minutes. Ten right? minutes. So, and, and there was people, I'm not going to name them, though, out of the respect for their privacy. There was people, <laughs> you know, from ESL who were like, thank you for doing this. Oh. Because now I hope it's going to be on time for the next one. And it's not okay that you guys have to wait and potentially be late and get stressed because it was arena days at that time. I still got the rant. So, Paula, stop being yeah, fucking yeah, late, did, dude. Right? Because this is also the thing. If something horrible happens, like, you know. A car crash? No, 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 oh, no, no. no. Okay. Not, it's horrible is too strong. But if something unfortunate happens, like... You know, you have to take a shit as you're supposed to leave. Like, that's not going to end in three minutes, right? Like, if, if you, you... might have IBS. If, you're, if, yeah. if you... The shirt, IBS. The, shirt, the shirt that you wanted to wear, if you found out it was... Uh, 
fucking had stain, stain, stain yeah, okay. and you know and you have to figure out you don't have a spare one and you have to figure that shit out like that's unforeseen circumstances people leave if you're late two fucking minutes three minutes that means you don't respect other people's time Here we that go. means you didn't wake that you didn't start getting ready on time you can't tell me you're three minutes late because you know whatever happened like it can't happen if you start get getting ready on time and i hate that because what i hate chad here we go in today's society to some extent is the lack of empathy it's like people only looking after their own yeah, ass dude. and only thinking of themselves there can be 10 people in that lobby waiting for your for this one person to come down and they consider it normal and i've even had people back home who would say something like because i hate being late in general right like you have dinner plans and then someone's or, or you want to go out and someone's late like 20 minutes 30 minutes like what the fuck and then a person said to me oh but everyone knows i'm always late so they just take that oh. into account i'm like fuck oh yeah screw those people i think that's the big one is, is, is regularity of lateness yeah if you're even if you're two three minutes late if you show up be oh i'm so sorry I will let that slide also, every single time. If you say sorry, I'll let that slide every single time. But if you're two, three minutes late every day exactly. for an entire week, now you're taking the piss. Now I know it's just like because the other alternative is like, well, then I can take an extra two, three minutes, and I don't even like you tempting me into being yeah, that okay, way. Okay, okay, okay. Because it's, it, you know, I will be two or three minutes late every once in a while. I will be. We're but, all human, man. But it I'll, happens. You forget yeah, something yeah. in your room. But you have to go up. You know what motivates lift. me? When I wake up the next day, when I wake up the next day, I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to be late twice. Sure. Because now everybody who is there at 8.30, if I am late back to back days, I know what they think of me because I know what I think of people when that shit happens. Yes, yes you think and they're I, fucking oh, assholes. I, <laughs> I'll never, I'll never let that happen. those people from the and core of your soul. But they can, you know, if they apologize... I'll let it slide sometimes. How do you feel about this, right? Forgive, but never forget. So I grew up in a household where it's better to be 10 minutes early than to be one minute late, right? That was that was beaten into me. I I, I can't count the amount of times I've been not late. Literally. Not literally. My parents didn't <laughs> they, hit they me. They beat you for other things, they not did, for that. Yeah, not for being late or being on time. Uh, <laughs> but this is something, you said something there, and I remember talking to Sue. I miss Sue. Hope I miss Sue's Sue. Shout out well. to Sue one yeah, time. And Fifi. Yeah, and Yeah. But anyway, uh, and she was saying like- Sue punches a lot. Yeah, she does. Yeah, when, she's, when, when she when laughs or when, when she's when near you. Yeah, really yeah funny, I miss I miss you, Sue yeah. too, but I don't miss sitting directly next to her. Yeah, that's true. She, <laughs> does get, she gets a bit jabby. Okay, but the what she so the way that we use our language, she was I think it was Sue. Maybe I heard this on a podcast. Anyway, I credit it to Sue. But so what the example you're giving here? I'm going to try this next time. I'm late, which is going to be never. But instead of going, sorry, I'm late. Thank you for waiting for me. Ooh, okay. Thank you for waiting me. Now, yeah. that's probably not in our business sense when we're waiting to go into work together and someone's consistently late, but maybe for a friend, you know? So it's like, you know, th thank you for waiting. You could still probably put a sorry. I'd still, I'll do both. I'll do both. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. Canadian. I was going to so say, you're definitely sor doing both. Yeah, the, the sorry is, uh, that one's just instinctual. Yeah, right. Yeah. But if you hit both, that's a nice one as well. Yeah. Chad. Yes? It literally costs zero dollars to be a nice person. There we go. And we Mike could all drop use a little bit more <laughs> in, of that. In the wise words of Maui Snake, <laughs> oh. being toxic is a choice. Okay, that's true. Yeah, I can see that. At all times. Yeah. yeah you yeah. can't control how you react. It's like you can't control your emotions. Mm -hmm. You can't. Something happens, you're going to re you have an emotional response. But you can control how you react to those emotions. Sure. You can get mad at something. Yep. But don't hang on to it for too long. You know, it's okay. like recognize when you're angry or upset or whatever, and emotions are allowed. That shit's all normal. I yeah, I need to work on that. But, but how I, you react, you know, it's. I, I need to work on yeah. that. I still remember fucking Searson online wrecking us like every other round. <laughs> like walking back up on a ramp with a USP. Like he has an op and he pulls out an USP on Antique when four bullets, four headshots. Yeah. Why as we're swinging cat. It's like, you know, that shit's been, I'll never forget that. <laughs> that like a fucking you'll, you'll really with online that. game in Pro League, but. <laughs> I, I, I uh, at one point, I think, uh, and Machine, Machine EGTV will remember me saying this. I think at one point I said, uh, anger is my best emotion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I. Because you're good at it. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know. I just, sometimes I get a bit angry about things, you know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm, people at home think I'm an angry person. Sometimes I can. I don't be. think so. Sometimes I, I think you're an angry an person, angry person, but I, I, I can, I, can, I, I think you're. Uh, how do I, how do I put this? Like a cunt. 
No, nope. oh, no, nope, okay. not at all, not at all, not at all. Because you again, smile and laugh, you smile and you laugh, but it's like you're, you're. I think it's the same reason people love your rants. You both have that quality. People like to hear you guys rant because it's impassioned. It's almost like you want better. That's you, a good word. You want, yeah, you're impassioned. Yeah. You fucking. Yeah, we're not assholes. We're no. just impassioned. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Chad. Nice. You'd yeah. be assholes if you were making other people's day. That to me is the other thing. Like you know, you can get, you can get mad. You we can be, we can be playing Counter Strike together. We could be getting our shit pushed in, and everybody at that point is not having a good time. But if you if you start to make it worse for other people, the that's where I draw the line. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm one of those people who's like, I'm like uh, obnoxiously optimistic when we're losing. Come on, guys, we, we never, can just we, get that we, we one more round. Boys. <laughs> Come on, guys. I feel like, like Henry and me are complete opposites of that. Uh, yeah, you you two are. That's yeah, why I don't yeah. stream. I'm way too toxic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm oh, not yeah, Connor, Connor, Connor is optimistic. Team speaks will yeah. go. Team speaks Quiet. will go silent yeah. while we're losing, and I'll be that first guy to be like, "Come on, boys, it's just one." And I know it's even. I know it's performative. But I hate it for you because you already plan on 140 ping. I know you're not, you're having a hard time already. <laughs> sure, yeah. Even if you're winning, you're having a hard yeah. time. <laughs> so I can't bring frags, but I'll bring. I'll bring. No, you frag. A I wasn't saying mood, that. Bro. I just sure. meant like for you, life is already fucking on hard mode. So having to yeah, still but, be. Hey. Nah, but I get to play European Counter Strike. Yeah, true. So there's the silver lining on that true. one. True. Yeah. Okay. I see. But yeah. So it's like if you if you can just bring positivity, dude. That's that's a quality. If if you're the person who dies and goes, <sighs> yeah. the Mike Sires. You yeah. know what the problem? Mike is, Sires is where I jo- I draw jokes, the line. Jokes aside, that happens in pro teams. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Hundred like percent. In the, some of the best teams in the world, some of the best players you can think of, they have reactions like that. Yep. And it's very difficult. To a veteran player to explain how damaging that is. Yep. To it the undermines team. everything. Like everything. Another yeah. reference to the Game and Glory documentary. Um, this will be the first reference. Is it? Today. Yeah, we didn't do, do I don't talk think about we, it we talked about the last episode. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, today, yeah. but uh, we didn't last. Never mind. So you can uh, hear, you can see Katie and talk about it after they lose map one to outsiders <clears throat> in the grand final, or maybe it was Fury. Was in, this to in Tessus? Map no, no, no. Uh. This was to the whole team okay. saying like, guys, I need you like all to give me like a maximum, like always believe in your teammate, like believe in the win, believe in your teammates. Like, I don't want to see anyone, you know, doubting because it's like a virus. I don't know if he said virus yeah, or yeah. cancer, it doesn't yeah. matter. Like the, the point was like, you know, it just spreads and it, it just kills like any sort of, a, and I think that's like, I think if anyone else was leading heroic except for Katie and they would be not shit. Uh, your GoPro. GoPro's out of battery, but yeah. we got the webcam. Yeah. All right. I think if it was anyone else, they would be a much worse team. I think he's making that team a lot more than the sum of their mm-hmm. parts with his leadership, right? Because it's very difficult to maintain that sort of an attitude throughout. Yes. Maybe even a map, if it's up and down, a, 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 over the course of a series, sure, and even you know over a long period of time, but it all starts... It all starts with him, right? Yeah. So if he brings that every day in practice and everything else, like it sort of it sort of conditions his teammates to it. And that's a very powerful thing. That's what enables, you know, someone like Tessis to play with a well, I mean, they're all good players now, but let's say for example, someone like Tessis to play with the confidence of a I don't know, Nico or someone like that, right? A player who's objectively more skilled, let's say, than him. And if you can do that, like Tier it's a one Counter Strike, a lot it's of a it skill, is like yeah. a confidence, yeah, for sure. confidence game, right? It's just about having the balls to do the thing you believe is right in crunch time, right? When the fucking score is 14 14 or 12 12, and whoever loses the round has to double equal or something like that, right? So I think that's a tremendous attribute, like value that, that, that he adds Great to quality. the team. And, you know, and props to him. He's also stepped up individually. Yeah. Like he's been better with the ops. So those two things combined. And Yabi sort of like figuring it out for himself how to play in that team it are the main reasons why they got to the number one spot. But we've already spoke about this culture again. Like that's again the, the way you're talking about the culture, the culture yeah. that hurt. I always, yeah. I always thought Kadian would make an excellent cult leader. Okay, like and that's him. what he's doing. It's like he, if you are, if you are going to play on heroic, you have to believe in Kadian. If that's a team where if anybody starts to doubt his system or doubts him as a captain, yeah, you know. 
and I almost think that if that, let's say Jabby shows up and he just starts, you know, starts whispering to Shush and Tessus on the side, like, mm. you know, guys, I think Stown should actually be. I think those people, instead of hearing him out, would report back to Cadian and they'd cut Yabby's ass. Like, they believe in Cadian. Like, yeah. l- like, like, not cut him from the team. They were like, yeah, oh, yeah. Kick <laughs> the yeah. 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 Jabby shows up to Pro League with those nine fingers Danes. or something, right? Yeah. It's like, no, he, nobody is going to unroot him from that system I, I felt like you know fall finals that's why i knew i i i knew before without you know some teams they win a tournament and then you just you just see them kind of fucking aimlessly wander around the stage to the trophy they go shake hands but you, you saw katie and lead everybody out of their booth to their opponents to shake those hands then walk down the steps then got to the stage where the trophy was he's hearing me cast the trophy lift Let's me f- crescendo. Does his little jazz hands on the side. It's like he's he's a he's a leader, bro. He's born that way. And I think if you can make any comparison to another player, James also a great cult leader. Yeah, but like different a style of cult. Different though. style. Yeah, a different style it, of cult. It's almost like the biggest cult out there. <laughs> yeah, it's it's almost like in that case, you know, they don't think he's human. Like he yeah, knows something. Okay. You know, it's like you know how some cult leaders say, like, oh, sorry guys, God only talks to me. Yeah. So you got to listen to what I say because I'm, you know, he's telling me that this is right. That's Jane, bro. Okay. Nobody sees him outside of his hotel room. I feel like he just shows up into prac room and they all better be in their line and ready for like today's lessons, you know? And those are the two examples I could always think of. And it's funny that they got a major finals against each other because it's yeah. like such a clash of styles. But if there's one thing that those two human beings from different parts of the planet have in common, it's that they're genuine captains. Yeah. Like they're actual leaders. And it's a crucial thing for any team. You know, the, the reason why we were able to have some good results with FaZe, even though maybe our roster wasn't up to par and Nico was still sort of leaning into that in-game leader role, was because his personality, he has a leader sort of a personality and he has authority. And he would call things that sometimes that I don't necessarily agree that it's a good read, but I'm not going to call a timeout and overcall him because everyone's like, fuck yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's yeah. go. You know, like everyone's believing in the call and I've seen it countless times. 100% belief in a non-ideal call has better chance of succeeding than a good call where people are doubting it. Yeah. Right. Which was a problem like in, with some other players who were in-game leaders that, that even I've coached or that I've been around is like, they don't exert that sort of authority. They could be also really smart and right majority of the times, but you know, they, they let other people question them potentially. You know, they're trying to be too nice to everyone and listen to everyone's sort of, you know, opinion. Like sometimes yeah. you just have to be like, Hey, we're doing, you know, this, like that, just do it. Right. And, 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 and that's fine as well. So yeah, a- absolutely. One of the main things that are important for your team to be successful is to have that. I think it's one of the reasons that you kinder to liquid worked so well, so quickly. And I think it's one yeah. of the reasons that it's slowly not working anymore. Oh, okay. I think that Yakinder gets into that. I like that he gets into that. He gets into that environment, and you know he kind of commands the room. And Yakinder has that about him. And I'm sure you know. Think about how much Elige was like riding that high and was all in on it. And I think over time, I think over time, Liquid kills everybody. You know, okay. I feel like he's been I feel like his his light has been dimmed in a certain regard, or at least again, maybe it's just the start of the year. I don't know. But I feel like he walked into that room and all of a sudden there was something to believe in. And he had a crazy individual level. Like I gotta give him props for that. But um because I was just racking my head, like who else could we put in that category? And I think that was a great example last year of like at least flash in the pan. Yeah. Worked really well. It was well. successful. They was, all, and they were all talking about and it. And they were all talking about it, they were all in on it. And I'm just now I'm just waiting to see how long that keeps going. Like, when's the next interview that someone's gonna, you know, when's the next liquid interview where somebody just continues to highly praise you, Kinder? Sure. That conversation hasn't happened for a, a couple months. Yeah. We've also been player break, but yeah. yeah. But that stuff can like that stuff can brew like super easy. And like when I reflect on my career and different players and different moments, I wish I knew half of what I knew right now to like be a better leader and then also deal with certain things that cropped up within my team. And the thing that always strikes me is your kinder is so young right so mm-hmm. for him and this is another thing this is why i also think that oc with the orp in liquid is having a hard time is because well your kinder didn't know necessarily why jane was approaching the way that jane was approaching the game right like so he didn't bring that with him he can't just tell oc yo play like this right whereas the rest of the team he can do the macro i like the way that they talk about the macro the micro i think that's really cool but like but yeah in terms of being a leader as well like jane had that aura about him he's a bit 
at least if you watch his YouTube videos, he's not reserved at all. He has such a great personality, yeah. right? And if he has part of that personality when he's in-game leading, but also has this mysterious side to him, that's kind of cool. Whereas Yakinder, I guess, is he hasn't been in that leadership figurehead position and he really shouldn't be in this team, but he... he shouldn't be yet in any team. But he, he has it in Liquid and maybe, yeah, maybe Connor's understanding here. Maybe you've, you've solved the mystery. It's not Yakinder's fault, but it's this, not a power struggle, but like... I mean, it's everyone else's fault basically in in some way i wouldn't i could find something in anyone except for naf okay yeah naf's just getting on P with it potentially right yeah. like he's that, always that, just that been getting on with it should be better at something there's something wrong with each of these players in a sense of something missing that could really make them yeah. click but this is why i hate well that's a strong word but this is why i dislike you know the na teams and all of that stuff is look how long we've and how much we talked about liquid for what 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 they what came did second warrant, in pro league what did warrant us to talk this much about them and, and this has always been the benefit cis teams have always been underrated compared to teams from the west but especially na teams that's one of the reasons why outsiders won the major no one fucking talked about them no one took them that seriously people were you still did, Yanko. people were still jason ah, you're, you're live oh oh i'm live you're in the I microphone hey daddy we were talking about liquid so we thought you'd bring we'd bring you in Oh, perfect. Yeah, that's uh, that's my thing. Um, Jason, we, we started the show by congratulating you on uh, the birth of your child. Uh, how have things been going in the first five days? <laughs> yeah, it hasn't been bad. It's been a lot of uh, changing diapers and feeding food and then just sleep. So I've been, does, that uh, yeah, I've been doing it. does that remind you of your time in liquids, Jason? Yeah, it's, uh, that, I think that prepared me nicely uh, for this, obviously. The, the whole coaching experience was like a precursor. Okay, so it's, it's good that you're prepared for this. Now, we have, we have Connor with us here today, Jason. Is there anything you'd like to say to Connor? Wow, the scrum dog. No, no. What's up, man? <laughs> How's it going? Uh, Jason, I'd just like to say more and more pictures of your chest on the internet, please. Yeah, you like that? I, got, I was wearing my, uh, my winter sweater uh, for sure. And also, you let your dog kiss your face a little too much for my liking. Yeah, do you think so? <laughs> I thought it was a fair amount. I thought it was a healthy, it was a healthy little session. A healthy little session. Okay, that that could go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Jason, is there anything that you want to say to the to the listeners on our historic twenty eighth episode of Talk Encounter? Holy shit, 28 episodes. Wow, what a, what a ride it's been, you know? What a way we've come. No, I'm, I'm just, I'm pumped actually. Uh, it's, it's weird not being there for the first time in like six years, but uh, I've been on like the morning shift with the baby starting at like 5 a.m. to like 10 a.m. Uh, while Jane gets some sleep. So I'm just pumped to watch Katowice with the kid on the couch and just be a, be a viewer. Okay, uh, now Connor did see that you were playing a video game and in that video game, I forget the name. That's right. Death Stranded, Strand. you strand, stranding doesn't matter. Whatever, <laughs> you carry around a baby in a bucket. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's uh, yeah, it's a cool little, cool little thing. That's uh, that's mostly just coincidence, though. I'm not really considering doing that in real life. Uh, okay. we, have a, we have a whole carrying situation going on. All right, we were just checking because we didn't know if we needed to call the authorities on you or anything. But that's that's good to know that it is just a video game and uh, not how you hope to live your life. Yeah, that would be that would be fucking weird, man. The baby's in like a little canister with a bunch of fluid, so I don't know how that would go. Um, but but yeah. All right, and and one more one more hot take. Who's winning Katowice? Who's winning Katowice? Oh man, if I had to go for a hot take, I feel like I feel like the redemption of G two from hey! last year is at their height right now. Called it. That would be that would be a sick story, and I think that would be a pretty hot take because I don't think a lot of people expect them to be able to keep that up after you know the start of the year and, and the end of last year. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for your time, Jason. Uh, we hope to see you again soon. Wait, who, did you, who are you guys all predicting to win? I don't know. That, that... Listen to the fucking podcast, and you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the next segment right. we're about to get there we haven't gotten there just yet perfect take me there boys i'll listen to it later all right uh good luck with everything jason and Bye, uh, jason. And, and give jane our love and uh, and we'll see you soon will do all right have a good one boys see you, mate. bye see you see you jason 
That was Jason Moses O'Toole, everybody. <laughs> live. Uh, that was live a fun segment. Grand Rapids, Michigan. But I guess it's, we're about the two-hour mark, and it's probably a good time now to start winding it down, considering we have an 8.35 a.m. call time, yeah. and I still need to upload this. So, oh, yeah. you know. I'll well, the internet's up. pretty good now. I'm going to, mate, I'm plugging straight into the Ethernet. I don't give a fuck. There you go. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, just yeah. going yeah, fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, oh, that PC setup they have for us is quite nice, though. Uh, yeah. Shout out ESL for that one. That's yeah. something that we had at Blast during the pandemic, and we lost, and we never got back. And I miss. Try and dearly. rattle the cage, you know? We rattled the cage. We, honestly, you know <laughs> what's crazy? We did rattle the cage at Blast, and I thought we got excellent catering throughout this last group stage. Okay. It's the best I've ever eaten at a Blast event without having to go out on my own dime. And then even on the way here, Katie and still complained about it. But do you so think fuck he was, that do you because think he was because I praised last or do you think he was talking about coming here? Listen, I think he just finished the blast event. I think the last day of blast catering was bad. Uh, and and then one day in those lower tweets, there was also a I think I think ESL has stepped up a lot in the last year. So, I mean, it you're either talking about blast or you're talking about ESL. And then you praise the I know later catering on. here is hard. Like we know catering yeah. here, it's gotten better over the years. But the thing that they do for us is we get Depends Uber Eats vouchers, are. which and is nice. Also, man, if I hear players bitching about catering, and then and then I see you at eight thirty p.m. ordering McDonald's or pizza to the lobby. Ooh. Now you can order those foods. Don't get me wrong, I do too. But don't complain about quality of food. You know what I mean? Like if your whole angle is like, wow, it's not healthy. It's, it's like, bro, we're all over the place here. <laughs> It gave me a great idea for content. I showed it to our, our, our main content guy, Katie, in tweet, and I said, just uh, get a get a camera uh, and a mic and send him with Maui, and Maui can take Food him to reviews. his favorite Food favorite reviews, yeah. favorite spots in Katowice, right, and see what Katie thinks about that. There's a good ramen spot. There's, I, there's, 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 Carmack will take you out for uh, a hot chocolate. He thinks it's the best hot chocolate ever. Wow. Yeah. Karma has his like hot the chocolate mayonnaise? spot, the mayonnaise from his home place, which is actually legit it's good. good. I'm, a, yeah. I'm a mayonnaise fan, but... Yeah, and I think with 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 Blad, not Blad, I think Denmark just doesn't have good catering. I don't know why. Because when we were there for you know pro leagues and yeah. stuff, like they would try to make the weirdest shit. It's like why yeah, are you dude, making chili con carne in Denmark? It's like they don't have any spice. I also don't know no. what is it yeah. that players anywhere. expect. I saw players then other players com- you know reply to his tweet and say, "Oh yeah, dry chicken and rice." You know, dude, if I get chicken and rice, I'm, happy. I'm it's a fucking good day, man. happy. Yeah. It's a good day. It's yeah. like proper food that like, I can eat. Other, it's always some, you know, stuffed this or deep fried that or I don't know, you know. I, I know, and, you know, vegans are always going to have a fucking tough time with catering. It's like, I don't know, I don't know where or how much <laughs> money you would have to pay to get, like, multiple good vegan options. It's like, that's mate, what, it's there's hard. not that's that many like, of you guys. That, that's like, why I like Harry. Yeah. Because Harry's a vegetarian, and I've seen him eat French fries only for a week straight. In terms of like event nah. food, that you know point, what I mean? Harry, and he no. won't complain, bro. At that point, just give up, just eat meat. <laughs> <He'll> complain. <laughs> it's know, like yeah. for blast though, like straight up. If you give me a salad, and this is exactly what we had. It was, it was. Uh, there was a convention center attached to the hotel. We have a new hotel at Blast. So okay. first of all, we got better rooms. Nice and groups. This is this is the best groups hotel we've had since Blast London 2020. Damn. Okay. okay. That hotel was legit. Was phenomenal. That was a great hotel. Isle of Dogs, probably yeah. the best hotel. Ever. That's oh shit, and then the COVID stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we got a new hotel. The convention center was next door. You didn't have to go outdoors to get to the catering. You could just walk across. Yeah, it was a bit of a walk to get to your practice room or whatever. But you know, if if that that place had uh, a, a make your own salad bar, it had fresh bread and like a charcuterie board. Ooh. So all the cheeses and meats you okay. want. So right there, you've got salads consistently every single day, multiple types. You've got meat and cheese and bread, multiple types every day. And then you're going to have two main course options, which are generally always some meat with some vegetables mixed all together. Sometimes it's got a sauce. Sometimes it's just dried. Sometimes it's, you know, seared or sauteed or steamed or whatever. But I remember on the last day literally saying to Frederick, like, hey, man, thanks for the upgrades because we asked for them and we felt them. Yeah. And then I got on the airplane the next day and I saw Blast get shit on and I felt bad because it's like. Chad can relate. Oh, it's, yeah. it's like that. I had such a completely different experience, and I don't understand if that's just me having lesser standards, or I don't know. But what. He, could Let me, too, he could be talking about here. Let I know, me. I know yeah, he could, concerned, be. yeah he, he could be. Yeah, he could be. He could be. Yeah. He wasn't talking about here. We don't need to. Uh, I don't know. He could isn't. be. So let me mansplain this. Could be talking about the year over the thing. You know, uh, here's the thing. Maybe, maybe he had. Maybe to be fair, now that I think about it, because I don't want to shit on Kadian. Now that I think about it, wow. the players didn't go to the studio every day, so maybe he came when the food was 
you know, there was a couple days I didn't touch the catering at the studio, yeah. but I was there every day. Yeah. But if a player only comes in one every two or three days, yeah. maybe he saw, on average, a worse menu. That's And that's fair. It happens. It yeah. happens. Some days, catering's bad. Denmark loves this dish. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's like an orange sauce with chopped up carrots, hot dogs, and oh, I've seen chicken this. pieces. What? And it's just, it's, it's like, it's like it's orange disgusting. stew. And if you eat it, it doesn't taste that bad. But I've had it three times across my two years being in Copenhagen. And every single time, it, it's messing you up for 24 There's hours. There's the IBS. Yeah. It's yeah. horrendous. Play. That and your goddamn fish cakes, Denmark. Oh, what is it? <laughs> but who's fish doing cakes? fish in catering? Who thinks, right? Most people, <laughs> oh. right? If you haven't fish, you want the highest quality fucking fish. Freshly caught yeah. from the ocean. She was still alive. Yeah, put some fucking lobster in their chat. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. No, no, no. But I'm just saying, if you eat fish, <laughs> you're, not, you're not going. You're not having. You fucking eat fish and chips. What are you talking about? I, I, it's cod that's been in the freezer for two weeks. In Australia, and you when put you, it in a deep fryer, then you eat it. In Australia, when and you, you have call fish it and chips, food, it's normally flake, which is like fucking shark. So you know, the, yeah, you're having shark, you're not even. Having, well, I guess it is a fish. But when I, if I'm having fish, I want to make sure it's good quality because seafood. It can go wrong. It can go bad. Yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. Rushley. He had some fucking prawns the other night. He still will <laughs> till this day say it wasn't the prawns. I guarantee the cunt it was the prawns. <laughs> yeah. So like, but seafood and it's such a risk at catering. Just stick with the chicken, the beef. Yeah. Right. If you want to go for a pork option, that's fine. But we got some people out there who don't do pork. That's fair. So you got to be careful with that. Throw in rice. Yeah. Put some fucking falafel. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> loves some falafel. <laughs> True. The fuck did well, that's come? for the veggies and the ah, everyone okay, else. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want those. Dude, I don't know if there's like one percent of vegetarians hummus. in Serbia. Yeah, well, dude, hummus. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. because we're poor. Yeah. Give it, give it. You know, hummus. Anyway. Jason would love hummus, if, and Every- I want to see Jason. I want to. I want you to tweet at me that you heard this part. That's how He's I know you would have listened. But you're not going to listen. <laughs> this. Every so single funny. day in Abu Dhabi. No, but I tell you he what. Had hummus for breakfast. One yeah. thing about Katie and this whole thing that I could understand is. You know, if you're playing, especially later in the day, you have a pretty set schedule and you plan, you know, have this much time for food and you're sort of counting on. So, but if you come to catering and the food is yeah. shit, yeah, it fucks you yeah. up. It fucks up your schedule. Yep. And then, you know, you either have to, you know, you can't maybe get an option super quick that you can eat in time. That means your manager maybe needs to order like a pizza yep. or McDonald's for you to just have any food yep. before the game. Yep. But if, you know, the carb overload and the food coma is a real thing, so then your energy goes down for the game. And I can understand that stuff can be annoying. It's detrimental. But that's also fixed easily ahead of time by just checking what the food is for the day for lunch. Your manager can do that. And if it's a horrific option, fucking pay for a meal. Yeah, yeah. It's not the end of the world. I understand it shouldn't be that way, but if it's really that, you know, on an off day, it doesn't matter, right? Like you'll do something, whatever, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure your way around. But if it's a game day, make sure you covered all of that stuff. And if it truly isn't like a good option, even if it's just one player, let's say, who's vegetarian and there's not a good option for him that day, fucking someone buy it for him. Whether it's the orc, he can order it himself, whatever. You want to make sure you're playing at a 100%. Right, so I can get that. That can be really frustrating. Any changes, I used to hate that, you know, when I was a coach. If someone was fucking fucking up my schedule with some un- shit that wasn't planned, it's like I would o- almost always say no to that yeah, stuff. I don't care fair. how that's small fair. it is. Yeah. I planned out my shit. I told my players. They planned out their day. If I come in, it's just a distraction, and I don't want that. So yeah, I can feel for him that way, but also players are fucking spoiled. What else is new? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Well, and look, the, I like. I only get a certain amount of things I can put in my body every day. Otherwise, I'll be fat. So if there's something and I don't like it, I'll just go and get some other food, you know. But like right now, you just mentioned McDonald's. I had dinner before we went in for rehearsal. Yep. And that was, and other than that, that I had... 5 p.m. What, you had dinner at 5 p.m.? Yeah. So now I have... How? That's normal. Well, now though. I'm hungry now. He mentioned McDonald's. I'm fucking hungry. Yeah, dude, but because you... How did you think of... Because I Staying up for another eight hours and not eating. And then you're going to sleep for eight hours. It's 16 hours without food chat. Are you fasting? A, I'm fasting. No, because I knew that then we had to do rehearsal. And then we would be here doing this. And then this would go for several hours. And then I've got to upload this. And right. then I can go to bed. To be up for 8.35 a.m. call time. And not be late. That's true. Let's pick winners. <laughs> Wait, one last thing. Here's the life hack if you're ever at events. If any players or talent are listening to you, that's why you have to, you just got to rob the catering every single day. You're pilfering snacks. Man, I've got I've got granola bars and bananas out my ass in my hotel room every single day. Yeah, but it's in my room. I don't even have to come down. That's true. It could be at any point tomorrow, any point I'm on my PC in the in the hotel room. 
Again, shout out ESL for PCs. There's bananas and granola bars always. Oh, we have a new casting setup. I I, I think I just, like just before before you go into it, yeah? I think I reached peak nutrition. Today. All right, here we go. All right. I woke up, I went to breakfast, had scrambled eggs. They suck. <laughs> I like them. They fucking suck. They, they weren't the Germans. They weren't the German powdered eggs. This was like a bit different. I can eat this. Fuck. Cucumber, some cheese and some fucking charcuterie, whatever. Cured ham. Yep, yep. You know, some meat. right? That was fine. Did media, what's not. That was like five, five hours later. I come Peak down nutrition. to the restaurant. The restaurant has a great like beef tenderloin. And we're in Katowice, so it's not fucking expensive. That a little bit of sweet potato fries, a little bit of a salad. Go Sounds back to good. my room and I'll go work out. It. And then while I was at rehearsals, Chad, when I saw that we were close to wrapping up, that's when I ordered sushi for the hotel. So we came back. I only had to wait at that point just another 30 minutes, right? It arrived right before you texted me at 8 p.m. I ate it in like 10 minutes and at 8.30 I'm here for the podcast and you're satiated ready to go and i finished i i'm not eating after 8 p.m which is great i don't remember last time i did that so you know and i i'm not hungry right now peak nutrition and i could drink one more water and i'll be fine i'll go pass out and tomorrow i'll have more of those delicious scrambled eggs <laughs> okay hotel scrambled eggs always suck here's how good blast food was at this last event good the hotel eggs. no not even but the most redeeming quality a full bottle of tabasco available at all times okay because all the right. one thing that'll you save can, shitty scrambled eggs is everything. just some Tabasco yeah, sauce. I have the same thing with ketchup. That's you can't taste them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? I do the same thing with yeah. ketchup. Ketchup yeah. saves, saves the day. Look, we I could we could keep talking for, for ages. Like I, the new caster setup that we have, hopefully it pans out, right? We Yanko, you've seen the caster desk before, right? You've seen this fucking miserable angled monitor. I was on the dog and bone with fucking the Mac. That's Carmac for sure. I just went British, <laughs> but in an Australian accent. Um, and he was, he'd heard me talk about the setup a couple of times before. So he was like, what can we do? So wanted a standing desk. We have a desk that is, uh, with a few things need to be fixed with the power cables, but it's uh, electric so it can go up and down. Each caster has a monitor arm with two monitors on it Crazy. and attached to a gaming PC. And then we have a big PGM or game screen uh, on a TV directly in front of us. And you can position those arms perfectly well, in theory, so that you can get like the in-game radar in your periphery while watching the PGM so you can catch in the action and have a stat screen mm -hmm. going. And we've got standing mats just like we're checkout chicks. I don't know if you guys know what a checkout chick is. In Australia, we call people... the Cashier. You, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yours is probably a bit more a politically correct term. I've been in Australia too long. Uh, but yeah, you, and we got the mats so you don't get fatigue on the feet. Yeah. So it's all sorted. This is phenomenal. It's all great. I'm really excited. Uh, I'd hate to have feet fatigue. Yeah, well, my almost as much as hate to have anal drippage. Fuck, uh, there was a whole anal <laughs> drippage, man. All right, winners. Shine Wait, on Nashi. It's a good thing we have that map because you know when I when we cast half days, we can get real fatigued real fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, all right, all right, all right. With some hot takes on the picks here. Who's gonna win? I don't have you, a hot you're take. You're going G two. I'm going with G two, and not because I'm you yeah. know bias a fanboy but because they're the most informed team and yes they're not gonna win 10 out of 12 pistols and the two they lose they're not gonna win the second round so the but the wins were you know it's not like that was the the result in a 16 14 game their games were like 16 7 16 10 i don't think that would have made a massive difference i don't think nico's gonna be able to play at such an insane level i think he's still gonna play really well i think some just other guys will have to contribute a little bit more but I think they're super confident. They put in the work. Um, they had some extra time in between to go back home and kind of see some stuff and maybe you know work a little bit on, on some maps that they maybe uh, don't feel are up to par. So I think the group is difficult, right? You know that game against yeah. FaZe is going to be important. Of course, they cannot make the playoffs, but I think you know if they if they end up losing to FaZe in a game and then to they run the low but bracket. this no, I don't want to give them fuck that. I don't want to give them that excuse. Okay. If they're really as good as they've looked. <laughs> There's no losing to two teams. They can lose to maybe one team, but they have to make it out of the group. Sure. They can either lose to, you know, phase in that game, but then they have to beat everyone else in the lower bracket, or they just beat them and, and be in the playoffs anyway and then make the run there, right? But okay. I feel like they're just watching them play. Their counter-strike is good, but also on the cameras, right, the, the body language and everything, it feels like they got to that thing where they're confident, not arrogant, and they're... You know, Hunter wins a 1v3 and he doesn't even crack a smile, right? Because he understands, he's focused, like there's more 
to be done. The game is still far from being over, right? And so on and so on. So that's why I have. You got G2. G2. Yeah. All right. Connor, who you got? I think G2 would be a fun pick, but I'm going to... I'm gonna do one that I think is less likely, however, still somewhat possible. And I'm gonna okay. say I'm gonna say Vitality. Okay, you liking their form? I think they're a few steps behind G2 because obviously Abu Dhabi looked really good for them, for G2 that is. But uh, this group stage play was phenomenal. That was that was actually a Vitality. I'm talking about Blast. That was a Vitality that is 100% no doubt going to make playoffs, especially considering the opening group that they start in. Right? They've got group stage advantage because of their side of the bracket being less stacked. Um, so I think no matter what, we're getting them in the Spodek. And then when that happens, you know, Zaiwu right now just looks unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable. Apex, I don't know who sat down with him and talked with him, but the amount of mistakes I saw him avoid during the blast group okay. stage because he was no longer, and I so vividly remember like Vertigo Short being a prime, perfect, specific example where previously you'd see him just spamming through smokes with an A4, just making making duels like making taking 50-50s he never had to, but just doing it for the sake of him being like this rambunctious player. It looks like somebody sat down and said, you can't do this anymore if we're going to win. And for that reason, I see them I see them in quarter I see them in semifinals no matter what. Grand finals, I would bet on it. Okay. And a win would just be one of those things that like somehow comes together. Okay. You know, I don't think it's likely, but uh, I don't want to answer G2 and I want to get on this hype train before before the Paris crescendo. All before right. Maui. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably still banking on big doing all right. <laughs> um, I don't know. For, so the thing is, for me, I just haven't seen an, uh, any tape on all the other names. So that like makes it really hard for me to pick a, a clear favorite. And that's why I want to go outside the box. That's why I want to go Cloud9, right? And the reason I want to go Cloud9 is because when you have Shiro and Axel on the team, if they're playing the same style form of counter they are playing last year, and then Buster adds a bit more variance into the roster, right? And he takes a couple of risks and takes a couple of moves, but they still have the same structure. I think what they were missing was initiators in certain rounds. They were doing it too much by the book. And if Buster brings in just a little bit more of that flair where he takes a little bit more autonomy on the way he wants to approach situations, and he's not in shit form because he wasn't in good form when we last saw him play, and then he had some time off. But I'm banking on this whole... HLTV did an article about when teams add a new player and then they like hit their peak, and right? So this is... This is them. They had Inters for a long time. They had this roster for a long time. They're bringing in Buster. They have two phenomenal players in Shiro who now understands what he needs to do in big matches to win. And Axo, if he's learned that lesson too, or maybe he's on the direction, maybe Cloud9. But I don't know. I haven't seen enough tape, so I'm just swinging the fucking breeze, boys. I, I, yours are based in recent results. Mine's based on a hunch. You know, I, I got nothing else to go off other than that. And I want to be different. You That's know? fine. That's fine. Yeah. So I hope, I hope everyone's okay with that. Yeah. All right. Should we, should we wind her off? Should we turn her off? We done? Connie, you want to say anything to the people at home? Our imaginary audience here? Yeah, everybody's sitting out there. Yeah. I want to say... Um, Tune into Scrawn Doggin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go listen to Scrawn Doggin if you want to hear more of my thoughts. It's a podcast that I do uh, with my own, with myself. Yeah. It's just me. I'm going to have a guest soon. Ooh. I may record it while I'm in Katowice, the first guest of Scrawn Doggin. Okay. But I also don't know if I want to open that door. So maybe it'll maybe it will just be me. Um, and otherwise, uh, thanks for having me on. I saw you guys said that you were going to have guests live for, for talking counter this week. There is that tick in the back of my head that thought, oh, fuck, I hope they asked. <laughs> <laughs> Day two, boys. Here we are. It, it was one of the first names off the tip of Yanko's tongue today. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out Good to looking that. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And, uh, Pleasure. yeah, we'll see everybody next time. Bye. Goodbye. See you.